There's this book called Fairies, Real Encounters with Little People by Janet Board. And in it, she discusses stories, both old and modern, of encounters with fairies and gnomes and things like that. There was this one that was written by a doctor in the late 1700s. He recounted a time when he was just a boy. He and several friends spotted gnomes dancing in a field. They were all holding handkerchiefs between them, like Moorish dancers. He said that when these gnomes spotted them, one of the gnomes chased after them and even grabbed this doctor as he slipped through a fence. The boy pulled free and said that the gnome, which he described as having a swarthy face, reached after him but was unable to grab him a second time. They ran to their parents, who immediately went out looking for these gnomes, but they had disappeared. According to the book, gnomes and other interdimensional beings were fond of kidnapping children, who would then act as servants in their world. Another story was actually printed in the Anchorage Daily News. A snowmobiler had spotted a young boy in a snow-covered field, all alone, and with no footprints anywhere. The boy just seemed to have appeared there. The boy said that he was taken into a local hill, one that local Eskimos had said was haunted. The boy said he found himself in a city and met a girl who had been kidnapped and brought there 40 years earlier. She asked the boy for help. The boy said that the Inserat, something like that, think it was the name the Eskimos gave these beings, had let him go for whatever reason. I find these stories really interesting, and I'm just curious if anyone else has experiences like these. My mother is the sweetest woman. Sometimes she slips money into my wallet for things, even though at this point in my life I don't really need it, thankfully. I recently used my PayPal account to order and ship something for her, because she had forgotten the password to her own account. It cost about $20, and I never thought about it again. She, not surprisingly, left a $20 bill on my kitchen counter a week or so later. I found it after she left, stuck it in my purse, and then went to sleep. I randomly remembered it a couple of days later, and I sent her a quick text message while she was at work that said, Oh, I did find that $20 you left. Thank you. That's all it said. She sent me a message about an hour later that said, That was the cutest picture of you, but now I can't find it. I asked which photo, because of course all I had sent was the text no photo. She said she was busy at work, but on the screen she saw the small unread text and a photo, so she quickly opened it to see the full photo of me. She showed it to her co-worker, so she's not the only one who saw this. She described the photo. She said I was holding a $20 bill right under my face and cheesing hard. She described my shirt and my hairstyle. Here's the thing. She described exactly how I was dressed, and exactly how I had done my hair that day. But I'm a million percent sure that I never took a photo, nor did I send her one. Just a thank you text. She was trying to figure out how I could delete the photo after sending it to her phone. If that is possible, I certainly am not capable of doing it, nor would I. All I can think is that there was some kind of glitch. This isn't the first time I've experienced a glitch, but it is the first in a long time, and I just thought I would share. This occurred about three years ago. I had a position as a buyer and as such would receive tons of cold calls and emails from people trying to get our company to try their products for resale. Also important, our company had a digital phone system, like VoIP. There was one central number, and it followed a phone tree to multiple offices via internet connection. Voicemails were available on our big office phones, 
but the recording would also be sent to our emails. So one day, I received a voicemail from a phone number I recognized as someone who had been attempting to get a hold of me, to sell me their products. Oddly, the voicemail was something like 15 minutes long. Curious, I began to listen to it. The message begins with just static, and the sound of rustling. Seems like a classic butt dial, or maybe they forgot to hang up when the voicemail clicked on. I fast-forwarded the message, just to see if anything was ever heard. And yes. Suddenly a clear voice. They're having a one-sided conversation. I think, ooh, these can be fun sometimes. Except, the one-sided conversation is clearly with me. The person on the phone is referencing my then-recent maternity leave, our company by name, a few other pretty identifying details that currently escape me. They'd stop speaking, and it would be blank air, and then they would answer a pertinent question that I would have asked in that kind of a conversation, clearly speaking to me, but I never spoke to this company or this person. I did receive additional emails from them later that were clearly initial attempts at communication and not a follow-up conversation. I checked with coworkers in case somehow, somewhere, their conversation got picked up in my voicemail. And nope, coworkers and husband were equally confused, but with zero explanation, we all just had to move on. About five years ago, when I was 14, my best friend and I, both female, went for a walk on a hiking route in our village. We had always known that it existed, but we'd never gone there, so we didn't know how long the hike would take. About halfway through, it started to get really dark outside. The route was a road through the woods that had no streetlights whatsoever. So we called one of our guy friends that had a crosser bike to come so that we wouldn't be alone. He came and we continued our walk in complete darkness. He turned off the bike because it was loud and decided to just push it. We didn't use our flashlights because the moonlight illuminated our path. As we were walking and talking, I heard something about 20 feet away in the woods that sounded like a loud scream through crying. I immediately stopped and looked at my friends, because I thought I was the only one who had heard it. But their terrified looks told me that they had heard it too. The two of them jumped on the bike and I ran after them to the first streetlight. Yeah, I know, they left me behind. We were panicking and trying to find an explanation for that sound. Maybe some kind of animal? Until I remembered a story about the Drekovac. I live in Balkan, and I don't think the name has a translation, but I guess I would call it maybe a howler or a screamer. Basically, it's a mythology creature characteristic in the Balkans, and there are probably 20 different beliefs as to what it is. This is the only paranormal thing that has ever happened to me, and to this day, I get goosebumps when I tell the story to somebody because I remember it like it happened yesterday. A few years back, my mom was coming home after spending the afternoon at my auntie's, cousin's, and their kid's house. When she got home, Mom told my husband and I about the incident she experienced, waiting for a bus. We come from a family of healers and sensitives, so I've had paranormal and supernatural experiences all my life, as has the rest of my family. My mom, although slightly skeptical and a bit reluctant to embrace the gifts which our ancestors passed down to us, has had her fair share of unexplained events in her own life. She told us that while she was waiting for the bus, she suddenly saw movement out of the corner of her eye. Across the road, she saw three young people. In usual circumstances, this wouldn't be out of the ordinary at all, 
as the shops are regular meeting places for all the local teenagers. However, there was something slightly odd about these young people. My mom said that they were dressed in the period of the 1970s, when my mom was a young teenager. People were milling about around them, very near them, but nobody was acknowledging them. Their existence was completely overlooked by other people, as if they were invisible. My mom was distracted for a brief moment, and when she looked back again where the mysterious teenagers had been, they were gone. She even watched the only open shop, as she thought maybe they had gone in. She waited until her bus came, 20 minutes later, but they didn't come out. There was nowhere else they could have gone in the time that my mom wasn't watching them. Mom said the most unsettling thing about it was how normal these teenagers looked, but the fact that she was the only one that seemed to be able to see them. It's a story she still tells today. In August of 2019, my mom got sick. She had a stroke, has diabetes, and so on. So the first time that my mom got sick, my brother was the one who stayed with her. And the second time she got sick, I stayed with her. Mostly because my brother couldn't be patient enough to take care of her again. My mom was being placed in a room that could fit six patients. There was this one time that I went to the canteen, and I bought like food and stuff like that. When I was in the elevator, a guy came in, so it was just the two of us. After I bought some things from the canteen, I went back using the same elevator, and I accidentally met the same man again, with the same elevator, just the two of us in it. We talked a little bit before the elevator opened. When it did, we heard some people screaming and crying. He asked me, what happened? Why are they screaming and crying like that? I said, I don't know, maybe a patient just passed away. If yes, may they rest in peace. I barely heard him say, thank you, like whispering. I didn't really pay any attention to it. I said goodbye to him and I walked to my mom's room. After a little bit of conversation, I went back to my mom's room and the crying and screaming voice was actually from that room. So I was kind of curious about who the person was that had passed. The nurse opened the curtain to prepare to move the body, and I was absolutely frozen. The person who had died was the guy that was talking to me in the elevator, and who had asked me what had happened. After that day, I had nightmares for a week, and now I'm always pretty paranoid whenever I go into an elevator. I don't know if this story is interesting to anyone else, but it definitely shook me up. When I, when I was around five, I went camping with my parents in a place called Bear Creek Reservoir in BC. It's a very isolated place, deep in the woods. We got there by driving up an old logging road. The actual reservoir itself was very beautiful and quiet. I actually looked up the area on Google Maps and it still gives me chills, even looking at it from a satellite perspective. But anyway. The day passed by without incident, and we mostly just swam the whole day. We went to bed that night, and nothing unusual had happened. But the following morning, I woke up in my parents' tent just as the sun was making its appearance. I unzipped the tent and noticed a figure standing maybe 50 feet away. The light was still fairly dim, so it was hard to make out distinct details, but it was just standing there, staring at me, unmoving. The entity had the figure of a woman of average size, but instead of seeing a face, there was just darkness. Even so, I could tell that it was looking at me. And instead of clothes and skin, it had leaves and sticks, as if it was made from them. I remember feeling very afraid of this creature, 
like if I left the tent, I wouldn't be seen again kind of fear. So I tried waking up my parents, and they were both really pissed that I woke them up, and they didn't believe me at all, until they finally got up later and explored the area. We ended up finding a bunch of man-made structures made of branches and other weird stuff in the area, but not one where I had seen it, so I don't know. Anyway, that's my true story. Let me know what you think. I'd like to go there again someday and see if I can find anything, but maybe it's best I don't. I'm from the small country of Bangladesh, and whenever I go to visit, my cousins and family members like telling us stories about all the paranormal things that they've encountered or heard about. They don't have any physical evidence, but they've all claimed to have had experiences with the paranormal. One of the stories I've commonly heard about are old trees, usually willows, sometimes banana trees, around lakes or rivers. It's believed that when a young maiden dies near the tree, their soul resides there. The deaths are usually drowning, unaliving someone else, or unaliving oneself. It is only during dawn when she said that the souls start to bother people. She said that hauntings behave like sirens do. To men who pass by a haunted tree during the dawn hours, they appear as very beautiful women. To women, they appear as a sad, lost little girl. When someone approaches them, they stay in their form. But whenever the person is at arm's length, they become demonic and angry and try to harm the person. Some people even claim to be possessed by those souls and get exorcisms performed. A lot of my family members are skeptical about the stories and don't believe them. But if they're outside around dawn, I'll watch them go out of their way to go all the way around an old tree near a lake or a river. So, I don't know how much they really don't believe in. I've never seen or experienced this, but I've had several people tell me the same story, independent of one another. So, I thought it would be interesting to share. My church had a fish fry in the seventh grade. I had decided not to go, but to host friends after. I was playing video games when they walked into my house. I noticed that one of them had a strange all black doll in their hands. Obviously, I inquired, and they told me that they had found a voodoo doll. Later, I would learn that the creepy kid at school had thrown it at them. None of us bought it, so naturally, we started putting our hair in it. After messing around with it to no avail, we left it on the floor and turned on a movie. Later on, another friend joined us, and not seeing the doll, he kicked it clear across the room. We paid it no mind at first, but seconds later my friend starts to cry as blood comes pouring out of his nose. Freaked out, we run out of the basement and try to move on with the night. For the next couple of nights, my friends and I experienced weird events. The main two people who messed with it got the worst. The number one culprit had footsteps walking all around his room, and his door would open during the night. Along with the footsteps and doors, he would hear masculine voices outside of his door. His parents were lesbians, so it wasn't either of them, as they both had fairly feminine and higher-pitched voices. The second culprit was awoken three nights in a row with bloody noses. Personally, I just had very vivid dreams of family members being killed and horrifying images. Not much has happened since, and I don't really talk to those guys anymore as we kind of all went on our separate paths. I still am not entirely sure what we experienced or how it all happened, but I'll never mess with one of those things again. I 
I saw a UFO, and I just want to know if there's some kind of explanation for what I saw. I didn't have my phone with me, so I don't have any evidence. But I did see a UFO. At first I thought it was a glare, but the moon was behind me, and I was seeing Orion's belt and some other stars in front of me. The first one I saw was on the left. Then I realized it was moving in one direction, so it couldn't be a glare. It was going northward. I also don't think that it was a plane because of the lockdown. Planes weren't really allowed to fly, and if they were, it was really limited. I definitely know what a plane looks and sounds like, and this was not it. The thing that I saw was just silently cruising in the sky. Seconds later, I saw one to the right. I saw small dots emitting light. It was as small as what stars look like at night, but they weren't twinkling, and the lighted dots were aligned in a constant position. I also saw that it changed its angle a bit after I saw the lighted dots. I asked myself if they could have been birds, migrating or passing by, because sometimes flocks of birds fly in a V-shape but that doesn't explain the glow. I'm not sure how high it was exactly in the sky, but it was definitely in the zone where a plane might fly, but it was way too big to be a plane. It was cruising for a good few seconds until it literally just vanished. Would there be any other explanation? Is that what a stealth bomber looks like at night? It was definitely a UFO, because it was an object flying in the sky and I didn't know what it was. So it was an unidentified flying object. I just want to know if it was alien or not. I am a 20-year-old male, and my buddies and I enjoy late-night walks on the trails within the various conservation areas in my region. We live in southwestern Ontario. Late last week, we decided to check out an area called Pleasant Valley. To my knowledge, this area has a deeply rooted history with the Underground Railroad, Indigenous people, as well as the War of 1812. If I'm not mistaken, it's because of its proximity to Lake Erie. At least that's what I've heard. We entered the woods at about 2 a.m., and immediately upon entering, I was overcome with a bad feeling. After walking for some time, the feeling progressively worsened until we reached two bent trees in an X over the path. One of my buddies pointed out the fact that it was, quote, bad juju to go underneath, and we should just call it a night. We all felt watched, so we thought it was probably a good idea. As soon as we turn around and start to head back, the entire forest seemed dramatically quieter. We all hear a loud, distinctively human whistle behind us, almost like how you would call a dog over. There's no way that anybody could have been out there at that hour. There's no homes in close enough proximity for someone to just be out and about. We all ran, and I was honestly terrified. My friends and I are all relatively big guys and we're pretty comfortable in the woods, so it takes a lot to get us running. There was also this faint, unpleasant odor, kind of like rotting eggs as we left the forest, and it wasn't present when we initially entered. I don't know if that's related, but we just noticed it. Either way, weird night. Before I get into my story, I'd like to give a little background about my dog growing up. His name was Fonzie because he had long black hair with a white patch on his chest. Growing up, he was my best friend and protector. He was a mix of Chow and German Shepherd. And if you've ever met a Chow, I'm sure you're well aware that once they imprint on you, they won't accept anyone but you. And they are fearless protectors which was just multiplied with the mix of German Shepherd. 
When I was eight, we lived in the foothills of Mount Baker in the Pacific Northwest. It was a not so populated area. One evening around dusk outside my house, Fonzie and I were up to our usual shenanigans. He would sit behind me as I shot my BB gun at some targets I had set up on the tree line. All of a sudden, he moved in front of me and started growling, which only happened when he felt that I was in danger. Right after he got between the tree line and me, about 20 feet, a very deep and loud, almost clicking sound came from the trees. Limbs were breaking and you could hear the ground pounding. We were both terrified. He started whimpering, which he never did. We both ran into the house. I looked out the window to see if whatever it was had come out of the woods, but nothing emerged. I told my dad about it, but he didn't believe me. He jokingly said, oh yeah, it was probably Bigfoot, but I've never heard of any Bigfoot story where it charged someone. Black bears tend to stay away from loud dogs and it was way too loud to be a cougar. So that's my story. It was by far the most terrifying experience of my life, and it still haunts me to this day as a 31-year-old man. About eight years ago, when I was 13, I was up until 3 a.m. playing Xbox online, as you do. I remember feeling a little peckish and I wanted some late night cereal, so I finished my game and went to go grab something to munch on. I turned on the hall lights and checked on my little brother, who was nine at the time, and my little sister, who was five. Being the oldest sibling, it was just something I would do. They were both fast asleep. As I got to the top of the staircase, I started to hear a little girl talking to herself. It completely creeped me out, but I thought maybe it was my sister sleep talking. But then it was even clearer, and I could really hear the sound of this girl's voice, and it was not my sister. I heard the voice coming from downstairs, and I got this horrible, sickening feeling inside my stomach. I got on my knees on the top of the staircase and put my head down the stairs a little, to hear the voice clearer. Then I figured that the voice was coming from the kitchen. Maybe she sensed I was there, because after that, when I tried to hear her even clearer, she laughed and I heard footsteps run off. I absolutely freaked out and ran into my mom and dad's room, telling them what had happened, but they both just told me to go back to bed. Needless to say, I did not get that bowl of cereal or sleep much that night. It was only a few weeks ago, now that I'm 21, that my mom has told me about the little girl who lives in our house. She says she feels her presence every now and then, mainly at the bottom of the stairs, which makes sense, as our two dogs now and our old dog used to stare up the staircase at nothing and sometimes bark like crazy. To this day, when I watch TV, I sometimes feel her looking at me from the stairs although I've never heard or experienced anything quite like I did when I was younger. About three years ago, my friend who I had known since birth was diagnosed with leukemia. After an intense and scary year-long battle, the cancer won. I miss him so much that I'm tearing up just writing this. Something happened before he died, though, that was really weird. I was eating some food in my dream, and my friend rang the doorbell. He had all of his hair, and he looked happy and healthy. He looked at me and said, I had a life I was going to live, and I couldn't live it. I want you to live a life and enjoy it. He smiled a bit and shrugged and said, Hey, it'll be okay without me. I'll miss you too up there, but don't worry about me. The pain is gone. He went in for a hug and we hugged for what felt like an eternity. I love you, man, he said, 
as his parents' car door opened. I yelled, Mark, don't leave me. Live. You have to live. He just looked at me and said, sorry, man, I gotta go, and kind of laughed. I screamed and screamed, don't leave me, over and over. But he got in the car, drove down the street, into a bright blue light, his favorite color. The second that the car was engulfed, I woke up crying and screaming. This all happened just as my mom got home. She walked in as I was crying and she said, Mark died. And I just kept crying and said, I know, I know. I cried for the whole day, but it did feel better being able to say goodbye in some way. I really do miss him. Rest in peace, Mark. I am a carer and I have been for about five or six years. I prefer to work nights as it's a calmer working experience. I've seen and heard many strange things, but two stick out and I thought I'd tell you about it. The first one. I was on shift one night and every hour we have to do checks on the residents to make sure that they're okay and still with us. So I'm doing my checks and everything is going okay until I get to the last room. This lady likes her door closed at night, so the light in the corridor doesn't wake her up, and I go to open her door, but I couldn't move it. It was as if someone was pushing it shut from the other side. I try two or three times to open it, and it just won't budge. Fearing that the lady has fallen behind it, I go to get the nurse on shift and my colleagues. Each of us try to open the door, but it won't move. After 20 minutes or so, the door opens easily, as it should do, and the lady was asleep in bed, snoring away, and there's nothing there to have kept the door closed. I should mention that this was in a part of the building that no one likes to be alone in, as it always feels like you're being watched. On a couple of occasions, a shadow has been seen in some of the rooms. The second, I came in on shift and found out that one of the residents had passed away just 30 minutes before the night staff got there. We were waiting for the undertakers to come and collect the body. It could be up to two hours before they got there. As we were going about our job, the buzzer went off in that room. I went and switched it off and left the room. His buzzer went off every 10 minutes until the undertakers arrived and none of us could ever explain why or how it was doing that. A few years ago, I was camping in the Serengeti as part of a safari I was doing. We had set up our tents in a designated camping area with a bathroom building. I'm from the States and had been camping and backpacking tons of times, but the Serengeti felt different. We could hear baboons from our tents for one. In the middle of the night, I had to pee, so I carefully unzipped my tent and started walking through the grass toward the bathrooms. Already, I was feeling a little jumpy. When I creaked open the bathroom door, a crap ton of bats flew over my head and out of the building. It felt like that scene in Batman Begins where young Bruce Wayne fell into the cave. I was just really hoping that nothing else was in the bathroom. It just felt really eerie. It ended up all right, but I was very glad to get back to my tent. On a separate trip, I was hiking through southern Ethiopia with a guide to a lake where we would be able to take a boat and see some hippos. It was quiet for the most part, but a portion of our hike took us through some brush and trees and we started hearing this loud, gruesome moaning, and the whole forest felt still. We looked and looked to find out what was making the sound, and that's when we saw a massive baboon lying face down on the ground, dying. 
We gathered from its position that it must have fallen from a tree and seriously injured itself, and was now crying out in pain. Obviously we kept our distance because we didn't know how it would react, or if any other animals would be nearby. The noise it made was both heartbreaking and terrifying. It had an almost spiritual quality to it. We moved on shortly after, but I'll forever remember how I felt watching this animal die alone in the forest. Honestly, it was one of the most surreal experiences of my life. I had two friends named James and Sarah. Their basement was super creepy and a lot of weird things happened there. This is one of them. It was a random summer night just like any other, with the exception of some of the hauntings they had experienced getting more frequent and bolder, I guess you could say. James was watching TV downstairs while Sarah was taking a shower upstairs. While James was watching TV, he saw what he thought was smoke, but it was in the shape of a person. It passed right between him and the TV. He didn't really give it much thought and assumed he was just seeing things. A few moments later, he heard a shriek and then what sounded like somebody running down the stairs, but only stepping on about every third step. It was Sarah, wearing only shorts and a sports bra. She bolted out of the house into her mom's house which was the house in the front of the lot. James chased her to find out what was wrong. She finally calmed down and said, I finished my shower and I was laying on my back, playing on my phone. My feet were dangling off the edge of the bed. I thought I heard the bedroom door creak open a bit. I thought it was you, but no one was there. That's when I felt somebody grab my ankles and try to pull me off the bed. That's why I ran out of the house. They did not stay in the house that night. Sarah actually had bruises around her ankles in the shape of fingerprints. That house is creepy. They told me that at any given time in the night, you can hear people talking in the empty rooms. Shadow people peer around the doorways. Things move or disappear randomly all the time. James even caught a picture once of that smoke while there was nothing in the room. In one of the pictures, the smoke even has a face. I've no idea what's going on in that house, but I don't know how they live there. Back in 2004 to 2005, I worked in a group home supporting people experiencing intellectual and developmental disabilities. I mostly worked nights, and since the clients in that home were pretty chill, we were always allowed to sleep a few hours before getting our clients up and ready for the day. I usually slept on the couch, with my shoes on the floor next to the couch, and my cell phone, keys, etc. either on the table, in my shoe, or next to my shoes. One morning, I got up and started getting things ready for the day. I had left my phone on the floor in front of the couch. I was a few feet away from the couch, looked over, and I saw a hand reach out from under the couch, grab my cell phone, and start to pull it under the couch. I lunged down and grabbed my phone with one hand. I pulled my phone back toward me, but I felt the resistance of whatever had a hold of my phone pulling it away from me under the couch. After a moment of tug of war, I pulled my phone from the grasp of the hand and it disappeared back under the couch. I was really freaked out and even to this day I get chills thinking about or relating this experience. The hand was obviously thin to be able to slide in and out from underneath that couch. From the wrist to the tip of the fingers was maybe three to four inches. The skin on this hand was gray and wrinkled, almost shriveled, and the nails, the fingernails were long, pointed, thick and yellow. 
I have no idea what it was that tried to take my phone, or why it wanted it, but it creeps me out to this day. It started on my commute home from work. I got about halfway through the 20 minute walk and at roughly 10.10, I saw these two flying objects that were blinking red and white. I didn't think much of it being as I live near an airport. That is, until I saw them fly toward each other, hover for a moment, and then depart in opposite directions. It's something that I've never seen drones or planes do before, and it got me really suspicious. I began following one of them, and it kept variating between moving very quickly, slowing down, and hovering in midair. I kept on the trail of that one up until I saw two more on the opposite end of the horizon. I began chasing them down, one by one, trying to get videos and keeping notes on what I'd seen. The main thing that spooked me, aside from the weird movements, was the oblong shape of them. They were just far enough visually that I could only really see the shape through the horizontal row of blinking lights, of which there were three on each flying object. Each one would blink the same pattern, the red lights flashing one after another, and then a white flash at the end, occurring uniformly every few seconds. I only saw them do bizarre movements a handful of times, otherwise I was just chasing them as they sped by. There were at least five of them throughout my entire voyage, all around the town. I would truly love to believe that they were just regular aircraft, but every single thing about them was weird. I took a couple of videos, but they didn't really come out. My camera can't shoot that well in the dark. If anybody can point me in the direction of what these things might be, or what the light patterns might mean, or really anything at all, let me know. It's been haunting me all night. Back when I was a child, I had a weird UFO experience. My dad had bought a new Ford truck after his beloved Bronco had to go. We went on a visit to my grandma's place on the reservation. We picked her up and we all went fishing together and had a really nice picnic. I remember that I had this really cool Disney swimming pool. Anyway, we were all driving home when this huge aircraft of some kind appeared on the way to San Carlos, Arizona. It was not on some secluded dirt or back road. It was on Interstate 70, between Globe and Paradox. It was huge. It was like the size of a Zeppelin. It had lights all along its length, which flashed blue, red, yellow, and green in about one second. We were stunned. It sat there for quite a long time in one spot, we passed an ambulance coming the other way, and also a police officer, who pulled over in our lane looking up at this thing. I was very young, but I was there with my parents and my grandma. My grandma has since passed on, but my parents still remember it. My mom calls the lights on the side of the UFO windows, but to me they just looked like a row of extremely bright lights. It stayed stationary for a long while, before suddenly moving south to the top of Mount Turnbull. Then it went straight upwards and disappeared into the sky. The moon was out and the only clouds were above the summit. I think about this experience from time to time and sometimes I doubt myself as to whether or not any of it happened. But there were three adults in the truck who saw it and the police officer on the side of the road too. I wish I could find the other people who saw it and ask if they remember it too. I 
had this problem since I've moved in to where I currently live. It's a rather basic problem. The lights in the basement go out at night. At first, I thought it was just the light bulb itself, so naturally, I changed it. Yet, whenever I wanted to grab something from the basement and it happened to be around 1 to 5 a.m., the light just wouldn't go on. I changed the bulb several times and it did nothing. The strangest thing is that I can literally have it turned on all evening and it's fine. Then I watch it go dark at night. It annoyed me to the point where I recently called an electrician to check if everything was all right with the wiring. Maybe it's some sort of automatic switch that turns it off during the night, right? Long story short, I paid quite some money for him to check everything and he found nothing. I can't blame him since everything works perfectly fine during the day. The next thing I did was set up different lights inside of the room, a light with a battery. At this point, I got a little freaked out since it turned off as well. I carried it back upstairs and after a minute or so, it worked perfectly fine again. I carried it back downstairs and after a few seconds, it went out. I'm not exactly on the edge because my house isn't really haunted. I don't have bad dreams, no poltergeist activity or anything. It's literally just this strange light situation. As you can probably tell, I'm quite the skeptic, but could this actually be something paranormal? Could it be something natural? Magnetic fields or something? I'm not experienced with these kinds of things. Maybe there are other things I could try. I just think it's really weird that the lights in the basement, all of them, go out at night. I worked the late shift for this company about six years ago. I would get off at midnight and the company bus would take us home. My neighborhood was the farthest, so I would be brought home last. I should also mention that the road that this happened on has had multiple strange incidents, accidents, murders, ghostly sightings, strange creatures, just a whole lot of weird stuff. On the last part of the journey, there were three of us left on the bus. After the driver confirmed our addresses, we continued. I was at the front of the bus. A young lady in the middle and a guy at the back were the other two passengers. We got to the guy's street and the driver stopped and waited for him to get off. After getting impatient, the driver asked the lady to go check if he was sleeping. She came running back to the front of the bus, crying and praying. We asked her what was wrong, and she said that there was nobody back there, and she wanted to go home right now. The driver switched on the lights and floored it. It gets even creepier. After getting off on my street, I began to walk to my house. This was now at about two o'clock in the morning. Every dog that I would walk past kept staring at something behind me. When I turned to look, there was nothing. There was no shadow, no sound, no buddy. After getting inside my house, I looked out the window for the next 10 minutes. It was just dead silence and dogs staring at nothing. I've never been able to figure out what happened that night, but it was freaky. This story was posted to Reddit by user EveningHoneydew1374, who tells a unique story about walking red shorts. It's creepier than it sounds. Here's the story. I've never considered my childhood home haunted, but I still can't make logical sense of this happening. My friend is the one who actually witnessed the unexplainable in my home. I had a friend over one day, 
We had just gotten back from an outing and we both needed to use the restroom. My house has two restrooms in it, so we both took one and did our business. These bathrooms are located within close proximity of each other. As I was finishing up my business, I hear my friend calling my name. I yell back saying, what? But she just continues to call for me. I can hear her voice fading as she is moving in the direction opposite of where the restroom that I was in was located. I finished up as quickly as I could to see what she wanted. When I find her, she tells me that she was leaving the restroom when she saw somebody at the end of the hall. She assumed it was me, as I was the only other one in the house other than her at the time. The only weird thing is that who she thought was me was wearing red shorts. I didn't own red shorts. She followed this figure to my brother's room, and when she looked into his room, nobody was there. But the red shorts the figure was wearing were laying on the floor of his room. When she told me this, we got the heck out of Dodge. Ever since that experience, I haven't experienced anything in my home. My friend is a mortician and deals with death on an almost daily basis. She has several unexplained stories ever since starting this job. It makes me wonder if her work with the dead may be related to this experience, as she is the only one who ever witnesses anything, and nothing strange has ever happened since. This story is a fascinating tale from Artistic Rip 8184 about a very peculiar patron that entered their restaurant. Here's their story. So this happened a while back and it still creeps me out. I'm hoping that this counts as a paranormal experience because it was the most realistic one I've ever had. I've heard that the dead can visit us in human form but I've always wondered if that's true. I was waiting tables at the restaurant I worked at one afternoon and stopped by to greet a table that had an older woman and a man sitting together. When I spoke to them, the man was looking down, so I didn't notice him right away. The woman ordered her beverage, and I asked the man what he would like to drink. He looked up at me and said, I'll take a Diet Pepsi. All I could do was stare. My dad passed away 26 years prior when I was a kid, but I swear on my life that the man sitting in front of me was the living, breathing version of him. Same face, same height and build, same voice, even the same gold tooth. I don't have a lot of good memories of my dad because he was super abusive to me and my mom. So I had a whole lot of emotions hit me all at once. When I could finally speak, I managed to stammer out, Oh, okay, I'll be right back. I took their order and checked on them a couple of times. When they paid, the man smiled at me with this twinkle in his eye that made me feel like it was my dad. He thanked me, but when he did, he didn't say the name listed on the receipt or on my name tag, my given name. Instead, he used my nickname, the name that only family uses, but I had never told either of them that name at all. In Southeast Asian culture, there's a particular ghost or demon that has its head detached from its body. It floats around with the intestines floating around below it, and apparently it glows. If you're Cambodian, you would know it by the name of Arb or Op. I believe in Thai it's called Krasue. You can Google it and get a good picture. Anyway, during high school, I was hanging out with a group of my friends who were all Southeast Asians. We were hanging out really late into the night, probably about 1 or 2 a.m., just drinking and overall just talking about random crap in the parking lot of an apartment complex. 
One of the guys, real tough dude that was physically bigger than us and never afraid to throw it down against others, had to go relieve himself. He went to the side of the apartments where there were no lights. After a minute or so, we just heard this loud yell of, oh shit. Dude literally ran back to us with his pants still unbuttoned and unzipped, with his pants covered in urine. The look on his face was one of sheer terror. We asked him what had happened, and he told us that he saw an op floating around. Feeling pretty uneasy about the whole thing, the other guys pulled out their guns. We waited for not even three minutes before finally just heading back home. When the older folks in the complex heard about it, they mentioned that one of the residents was practicing some kind of black magic and that maybe she had conjured it, but no one's ever really done anything about it. I mean, what can they do, right? Everybody suspected this girl, but no one really knows. The weird thing though, is that she died later and nobody ever knew why. This past Halloween, my fiance and I went to explore a real haunted building. I honestly wasn't expecting to have any weird experiences and I went in being skeptical. We booked ahead of time and I think it was a group of about 20 people or so that we didn't know. They gave us the history of the place and the rules and said to go look around. It wasn't a guided tour at all. It was just kind of a do your own thing. The place was super creepy, and I felt like I got weird vibes because of that. However, we went to the second floor, and I was walking past this tiny room that they probably used to store medication. I went to walk into the room, and the mirror in there was broken. I got really lightheaded, and an instant headache when I looked at it. I felt almost like I wasn't myself for about 30 seconds and I walked into another room. As soon as I left, the feelings went away. About five minutes later, my fiance said that she had the same thing happen to her before I even told her what happened to me. We ended up standing in a hallway and I was just recording with my phone. I'd say maybe 15 minutes went by with nothing. And then I felt this electricity from my feet course through my body to my hands and it was like an unseen force went to push my phone away. I wish I could have captured an EVP or some video, but I didn't. Has anyone else checked out a haunted place like this and have any experiences? It's definitely one that's going to be on the books for me for a long time. Has anyone else noticed an increase in doppelganger sightings recently? I just had one yesterday at the library where I work. My coworker and I saw a patron, a regular, who we see almost every day, walk in in sweatpants. Neither of us saw him leave. About 15 minutes later, the same man walked in through the one and only entrance and exit, this time wearing something completely different and more formal. My coworker and I stared at each other, completely puzzled. I asked him how he had walked past me so fast that I didn't even notice and why he had changed clothes. He looked at me like I was crazy. He claimed that he had been home all day and this was his first time stopping by. My coworker told him what happened and he was visibly freaked out. It freaked us all out because we looked around for this doppelganger and whoever it was had completely vanished. There is, like I said, only one way in and one way out for patrons. The other doors are either emergency exits, which would have set off the alarms, or the staff entrance, which is a highly restricted area. There was no way he could have left in that short a time 
without at least one of us noticing. There are no cameras in the building, so there's no way to see how this person could have left. But the only phenomenon that I can attribute this to is the mystery of doppelgangers. I'm very interested in the paranormal, but I'm not a researcher or an investigator. Just a fan, I guess. It seems like there's been an increase in doppelganger sightings. Has anyone else noticed this? I wonder what it could mean. Something strange happened while I was camping at Gatlin Point, in Land Between the Lakes Recreation Area. This past weekend, I was camping with some family and some friends there. This was quite a beautiful spot, right on the water. I had a great day setting up, cooking, and then a good evening, sitting by the fire and relaxing. At about one in the morning, my wife and I went to bed. At four, she woke me up and said that it sounded like somebody had thrown something into the lake. I told her it was probably just a fish jumping in the water. But right about that moment, I heard the splash, and it was not the sound of a fish jumping at all. It sounded like somebody had thrown a concrete block into the water. If you've ever heard a fish jump, you know that sound versus something thrown into the water. A couple of minutes later, there was another splash, but this time it was even closer and louder. A couple of minutes later, another. This is where things get really strange. At the waterline distance away, but right even with the tent, we heard a subdued scream and then the splash again. I opened the tent and shined my flashlight toward the shore and scanned it back and forth saying nothing. Nothing was there. Then the scream and splash again, farther to the right this time, but not by much. Then again farther down, and then gone. I got up and drove around. I searched with my light, and I found nothing. I don't really believe in ghosts or anything like that, but I'm having a really hard time with this one. Does anyone know what this might have been? So I'm walking to my new job at FedEx, and I didn't realize that I had to walk past a cemetery. Mind you, my shift is from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. I've walked past many cemeteries in my life, so I wasn't too concerned at first. I had a pretty lit up highway on my left, and on my right was a large cemetery. No cars, no people, just me. As I kept walking, I start feeling uneasy about the vibes. It wasn't fear, nor was I scared, but it was dreadfulness and sadness overall. And to make matters worse, I didn't realize that it was 3 a.m. at the time. I tried to look straight ahead and not acknowledge the fact that I had a cemetery six feet away from me, just engulfed in complete darkness. But I couldn't. And I can't explain really what I felt, but it was just awful, like a heavy feeling of sadness, but it felt cold. After walking for 20 straight minutes and realizing I had another 15 to go, I decided to just go back home. As I started walking back, I started hearing the grass rustling, as if somebody was following me. Honestly, I think my mind was playing tricks, but the whole time, I felt like I was being watched. I've had a good amount of paranormal encounters in my life, so I'm familiar with this feeling, but I just felt so afraid at that point. I just wanted to share this experience because it kind of had me distressed, and I'm just curious to see if anybody else has had a similar experience. I 
I visited Dudley Castle in England today with a friend, a very historically significant place, and apparently very haunted. The main attraction is the zoo, Dudley's zoological gardens and castle, but one of the enclosures, the castle creatures part, is within a section of the castle itself. There's a room that displays the history of the castle, and as we were reading the information, we both felt sort of uneasy, as if somebody was behind us. Note that the zoo was very empty today. My friend jumped away, saying that somebody had touched her arm. We stood for a second and moved on through the exhibition, feeling a little shaken, but in a sort of way excited too. As we nearly approached the bat enclosure, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye, and a third shadow appeared behind us, as if somebody was striding toward us. We had seen absolutely nobody inside the enclosures, and the layout of the building means that the noises often echo throughout the tight halls, but there was nobody there. We quickly ran out of the enclosure, terrified but still kind of excited. Something else to note is that my mother has experienced some potentially paranormal activity in this building, specifically inside of the bat enclosure. As she went to leave, she backed away and said sorry to someone who was behind her previously, who apparently had disappeared. Both of my parents were adamant that there was somebody there that she nearly ran into, and then disappeared the second she turned to apologize. Apparently, these are common experiences. As I said, Dudley Castle is apparently very haunted, so I'm just curious if anybody else has ever had an experience there or if there are any potential explanations, paranormal or otherwise. I was laying down for a nap. I had my two cats snuggled up with me and my two dogs were outside. All of a sudden, I heard toenails on the hardwood floor, and then sniffing beside the bed. My brain went, okay, one of the dogs is in here. And then I came instantly all the way awake, because my brain went, wait, how did they get in the house? I sat up expecting to see one of the pups sitting beside my bed, but there was nothing. I checked all the rooms, no dogs. The doors were all shut. I looked outside and both dogs were still out there. I have no explanation other than perhaps I was dreaming while I was semi-conscious. Or I had a visit from a church grim or black dog. I specifically say church grim because my house is unique. It was originally built attached to a church in the 70s for the pastor's family. My great grandma bought the house in the 90s from the kids of the original pastor. She attended the church and was extremely devout, so when the pastor passed away, she would go into the church from her house every Sunday and turn the heat on and prepare for service. She lived here until she died. Shortly before she died, the church had a new church built, so the old one became abandoned. My grandma inherited the house, and my husband and I bought it from her. So I'm living in my great-grandma's old house that's attached to an old abandoned church. The church still owns the original building, so I don't have access unless I ask. But this is why I think that perhaps I got a visit from a church grim. My dad told me this story from when he worked in a nursing home in Australia. It spooked me a bit, and I have no idea how he lasted as long as he did in that nursing home. For the record, my family are all skeptics, as far as I know. But I think this is the one story that would persuade me that ghosts are real. My dad worked the night shift, and he said that he had been told stories of deceased residents passing the front desk on the bottom floor. He said he even heard babies crying on the top floor. 
the nursing home used to be a maternity hospital. This crying would occur even though there was now no maternity clinic near it. There was a TV room on the bottom floor. It was on this floor where some of the residents who were kept in bed all night for their own safety were housed. He moved the chairs near the TV all the way back to the wall and locked the door. He came back an hour or so later whilst waiting for the porter and the door was open and one of the chairs was moved back across to the television. The door hadn't been forced. There were no windows in the room, and even if there were, the chair was too heavy to be blown back across the room. All the patients were accounted for. The porter arrived, and my dad asked him about the occurrence. The porter said, Oh yeah, that's Bob's chair. He doesn't like it to be away from the TV. My dad said, There is no Bob at this nursing home. The porter chuckled and said, There used to be. He's dead now. That's my dad's one and only experience with ghosts, and it chills me to the bone. I don't know if there's anything bad about this, but it's freaking me out anyway. In the place that I'm living in, we don't have an attic. At least that's what my parents keep telling me. But once in a while, there's something that's above me, that keeps following me whenever I move. If I move to the hallway, into my bathroom, and wait a little, I can hear loud creaking and footsteps above me, moving in the same direction, and stopping right above my head. This started off small, and I thought the place was just an old house. But it's just so loud now that it feels like somebody's up there. The noises are way too loud to be a small animal's. Also, I don't know if it's related, but one night when I was on my computer in my dark room, I didn't see anything, but I could tell that there was something staring at me to my right. My brain screamed at me not to look, but that feeling wouldn't go away for hours. When I eventually tried heading off to sleep, putting my computer to the side for a light source, for some reason I decided to put up my legs, and I swear I felt something trying to pull or push them down hard. Nothing like that has happened again since that night, but part of me feels like it may happen again. Another thing that's weird, too, is that I haven't heard the sound when it wasn't physically possible to, like when I listened to music or had my ears blocked. So, I think it's more natural than supernatural, but I don't know. Either way, it freaks me out. For about two months, weird things have been happening. I've been living in this house since 2000 now. My parents built it. It's only 22 years old. I'm from Bavaria, Germany. About one month ago, while I was laying in bed at about midnight, I heard knocking coming from the hallway ceiling. It knocked twice, and it sounded like there was a lot of force behind it, because the ceiling made crackling sounds. A few days later, I was laying in bed, and I was nearly asleep. Suddenly, I heard a childlike voice whispering behind me. They were whispering, Stint, stint. It's a German word for right, all right, or I agree. I was super scared, but I didn't dare turn around. Last night, I was woken up by three loud knocks. A few seconds later, the same three knocks came again, just a little bit more silent and gentle. At first I was kind of half asleep and half dreaming, but suddenly I realized this knocking was not from my dream, but it was from above me, maybe in the attic, and suddenly I was 100% awake and scared. My heart was beating out of my chest. I lay there for about 10 minutes without moving, 
I looked at my phone to see what time it was. 2.57 a.m. I couldn't sleep for two hours, but I didn't hear anything else. All the knocks that I heard so far cannot be wind or water pipes. They really do sound human. I have no idea what this could be. Last night, I was really bored again and decided that I wanted to see if I would have an experience at the cemetery at night. I waited until midnight and then went and nothing happened at first. I was just walking and then my flashlight started to flicker. I went to go hit it to see if it would start working again and I thought I heard a whisper. I turned around and shined my light on some stone seeing something go behind it. I started walking to it, and then, behind me, I heard a stick being stepped on. I immediately opened my phone and opened an app for a spirit box. I looked at the reviews, and people said that it actually worked, so I figured, okay. Anyway, I was using the app, and nothing was coming through when I previously tested it when I was hearing the voices. Nothing but static. So I decided to go to a really dark area where you can't even see the road. I asked if anybody was there, and I thought I heard my name. I got a little bit scared, but I asked again. I said, I need to talk to you. And then I heard laughing like a madman and footsteps running around me. I ran into the light and then nothing but static again. I didn't experience anything after that, until I walked to the exit and said, I'm leaving now, goodbye. And I heard a whisper right in my ear, say my name. I ran all the way home and I didn't look back. And I don't think I'll go back again. I'm a strong believer in listening to my gut. I always have been and always will be, since it's gotten me out of a few situations. One was my freshman year of high school. School had ended for the day, and since I was staying at my dad's house that week, I decided I would walk home. His house wasn't that far from school. Everything was fine, until I turned down the street where there's a shortcut. It led straight into my neighborhood. As I was walking to the shortcut, a man drove by, staring at me. My stomach dropped and turned. I took this as a note to walk a bit faster. By the time I got into my neighborhood, the man was circling around the cul-de-sac, waiting for me. He had a smirk slowly creeping onto his face as I walked by his car. I tried to ignore him the best I could and just kept walking. He would drive past me and yell vulgar things at me. He kept turning around and driving past me again and again. As I turned down my street, he followed closely behind. I saw him drive down my street and turn into someone's driveway to turn back around. I quickly got into my house and locked the door behind me. I then turned around to look through the peephole so I could see if he left. He didn't. The man pulled up into my driveway and got out of the car. Luckily, my neighbor, who's a family friend, was out in his garage. He came over yelling at the man and then stayed with me until my dad got home. A week later, my dad told me he saw the man parked at the end of the street, waiting for me. He went and threatened the man and we haven't seen him since, but I'm still freaked out every time I go and visit my dad. It's safe to say, I won't be walking home alone ever again.
My name is Luna, and I'm 35 years old, and I'm a hospice nurse. I've been a hospice nurse for the last 10 years. This is a story about a young woman I took care of that I became very close to. The patient in question was 23 years old and was dying of liver cancer. She was given about six months when she was told she was terminal and was put on hospice. I started going to her house twice a week at first, and we really liked each other. As she started slowly going downhill, I started coming more and more until I was there every day. Most of the time, we would just sit and talk. She was a very pretty girl with long black hair and blue eyes. She was very athletic and active before she got cancer, so not being able to do things for herself or get up and around without help was very hard for her. She always wore a minty smelling perfume, which I liked very much. I was with her the day she died, and that was a very hard day for me. I got home pretty late that day, and I made dinner for myself, and sat down in the living room in front of the television. I had been sitting there for about five minutes, when I smelled a minty smell that was just like my patient's perfume. Then I heard a cough, and a female voice call my name. I looked over toward the kitchen, and there was my patient standing beside the kitchen counter. She just looked at me, and she was smiling, and then she waved and disappeared. I think it was just her way of saying she was okay. Sometimes to this day, I still feel like she's watching over me. Sometimes I still smell her perfume, especially if I've had a hard day. Last October, my best friend, Tanner, died unexpectedly. I don't need to go into too many details because they're not relevant to the story, but it was easily one of the hardest hitting losses I've ever experienced. He and I shared a very close and special bond and had overcome a lot of life together. He had moved in with our mutual friend, Beth, and her boyfriend several months prior to passing away so I would constantly come over to hang out with everyone as I lived nearby. One summer day, we all had a giant Nerf gun fight together in their front yard. I distinctly remember making eye contact with Tanner and having this strange gut feeling at the time that this was going to be a bittersweet moment. But I brushed it off as just being sad that summer was coming to a close. I felt uneasy that he had at the same time a sad, longing look in his eyes that I did. It began to get dark out. After collecting as many darts as we could, we headed inside, and Tanner declared, this isn't over yet. A month later, after noticing many strange behaviors, Beth and her boyfriend made the heavy decision to call Tanner's mom and have her convince him to go back to rehab. Three months later, Tanner was dead. I have moved out of state since, but I always go back to visit Beth when I'm home. One day, after a heavy snowfall, I pulled into Beth's driveway. Just as I hopped out of my car, Beth came to the door to greet me. Something yellow popped out against the fresh snowfall, immediately catching both of our attention. We looked down and directly on her front step, perfectly placed in the untouched snow, with no footsteps around, was a nerf dart. Well played, buddy. Well played. I'm going to assume that most people who hear this story have watched or heard of the movie Interstellar. If not, then you must know about a particular aspect of the movie before I tell you this story. There are spoilers. Throughout the movie, one of the characters has multiple paranormal experiences in her room with what she calls a ghost. This ghost is later revealed to actually be her dad, which through some very complicated events, 
was able to interact with certain objects and forces like gravity in her room when he's inside a black hole somewhere out in space. So a while ago, my brother and both my parents and I were watching Interstellar. I had been trying to find an open slot in everyone's schedules to watch this movie together for a long time and had finally succeeded. We watched the whole movie and at the end of it, we were all discussing how good of a moment was when Cooper found out that his daughter had figured out that he was her ghost. Just as we step out of the living room after watching the movie, we hear a noise coming from the kitchen. We locate the source of the noise and it's an old phone that we had forgotten we even had underneath a pile of old magazines. It was ringing a loud alarm and displayed a low battery message on the screen. The thing is, we hadn't charged this phone for years. At least five years had passed since we had last charged this phone, and yet it was turned on and ringing for a few minutes. We all started laughing and jokingly said it was our ghost wanting to communicate with us. Watching the movie together was such an amazing family moment, and then something like this happens? I don't know. I just found it thought-provoking enough to share. We had a lot of paranormal activity in this old farmhouse that we lived in. Little things would happen. We would hear voices or something would turn on and we would just ignore it. Until one night. My husband and I were watching Stranger Things. Ironically, in the show, it was just after the lights had flicked out. Ours started to do the same thing. I made a small joke and thought nothing of it. As I went into the kitchen, I watched our vase go into the air maybe an inch and fall. Again, I thought it was creepy, but I didn't think a whole lot of it. My husband did end up getting an EVP, but unfortunately we lost it once we moved out of there. Anyway, we heard a pig on the EVP and keys. We also heard a female saying, Abby. We had a lot of other things happen in that house too. I'm not sure if it's just a ghost or if it's a demon. So far, every house I've lived in seems to have paranormal activity. My brother seems to have a lot of paranormal activity too, but he won't share what exactly has happened to him. I used to try to get recordings in his place, but he told me to stop and to stop messing with it. So out of respect, I did. I think whatever this thing is, is attached to my brother. I think that because he recently stayed with us for the weekend and I had my first paranormal experience in this new house. I had one of the doors slam with force, not because of air drafts or anything like that. And the stove kicked on. All of this happened right after he left. I don't know if I'm being paranoid or if something is following him around, but I'm pretty sure that something is attached to him. That or we picked something up from the farm, but honestly, I really don't know what's going on. My aunt has always been a lover of creepy things. She likes gory, spooky, haunted things. She's sort of the lovable oddball of the family. She's always been crazy about these things called living dead dolls. For those of you who don't know what they are, they're just terrifying looking collectible dolls, basically purchasable nightmare fuel. She had bought a bunch of them and had them on display in her home. I've never been a fan of dolls, let alone ones meant to be scary. So this story creeps me out a lot. She ran into some financial trouble and decided to start selling things on eBay to make some extra cash for bills. As much as it broke her heart, she decided to sell one of her more popular living dead dolls on eBay. Almost immediately after she posted her doll, there was an offer. She said her goodbyes, boxed up the doll and mailed it, no problem. 
A week or so later, she got the box back in the original packaging she sent it out in, but with a note saying undeliverable address, meaning she must have written it down wrong or it wasn't an acceptable place to deliver a package. My aunt figured it was just a spelling error and didn't think anything of it. She didn't open the package, she just put it in her closet. She went on eBay to try and contact the buyer. To her surprise, when she logged on, she already had a message from the buyer saying how she got the doll and how much she loved it and couldn't wait to brush its hair. She also described the doll in correct detail. My aunt was pretty freaked out. To this day, she still hasn't opened the package. It's just sitting in her closet. Edit. As a special Christmas gift, my aunt finally let me open the box. The doll was in it. For the first time in my life, I had a really lucid dream. At least I hope that's what it was. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, my time, PST. At my back door, it's a security door, so like a metal screen door, I saw something and I thought it was my wife. I asked her why she was out there and she said that she had accidentally locked herself out. I had been out there not five minutes before, and I knew that I didn't lock the door. She was wearing her normal bedtime apparel, but her hair wasn't the right color, and her voice wasn't quite right. I asked again what she was doing, and she just says, just let me in. I get closer to the door, but I can't see her face. I say again, why are you out there? She ignores me again and says, just let me in. I move to open the door and I noticed that she changed to an inhumanly small frame, which was all black and had no features. I slammed the wood door and bolted to find my wife asleep in the bed where I had left her. Now, if I'm honest, I don't even believe I was dreaming, but my mind cannot comprehend that as being real. Nothing anywhere near that level of paranormal has ever happened to me before. And whether or not it was a dream, it was definitely freaky. And I'm still trying to figure it out. My grandmother on my mother's side has always been very superstitious, for lack of a better word. She's not necessarily religious, but she does believe in a lot of paranormal stuff. Her mother was full-blooded Navajo, and her father was Irish. Either way, she'd never been anywhere east of Montana, and she grew up in Nevada. One year, when I was in grade school, we went to visit her. Most of the visit was pretty uneventful typical boring old people stuff, except she always kept her curtains drawn shut and would always peek out the window. And whenever somebody would ask her what she was doing, she would simply reply, you is watching me. This went on for nearly the entire visit until a few days before we were due to leave. My grandma and my then baby brother, he's 19 now, we're in the front yard that evening planting flowers when all of a sudden my grandmother starts shouting get away from that creature it's not safe to my brother of course being in nevada we all assumed that my brother had found a scorpion or a rattlesnake so we all run outside to see my grandmother clutching my little brother and shaking in terror against the side of the house standing out in the yard was a large, black, Great Dane-sized dog. It was staring at my grandmother with an intensity that I have never seen before. It looked up at us, gave a little huff, and bounded off. 
I don't remember if it moved unusually fast or not, but I do remember that it had very deep yellow eyes. When my mother asked my grandmother what had happened, she kept repeating, the Yenald Lushi has found me. She moved a couple of weeks after that. This happened a few years ago, but now it came back to my memory because of something I read recently. At the time of this, I was working for a private security company, and we were working at an event at Carisbrook Castle on the Isle of Wight. There were probably 10 to 15 of us scattered across the darkened castle in winter. It was really early in the morning, probably about 1 to 2 a.m., and a colleague and I picked the short straw of doing perimeter walk, where there is no light, not even from streetlights nearby. So we have to do laps of the entire castle along the wall with the moat on our right-hand side in near darkness, bar the torches that we were allowed to carry. As we approached our second lap near the longest stretch of the wall, I noticed footsteps in the darkness that weren't ours. We stopped a few times to check out this noise, but we could never pin it down to anything. It could have been an animal moving in the darkness, I suppose, but it just sounded strange. The next thing happened all within a few seconds, not really fast enough for us to respond. In the darkness, I noticed a figure of a man walking toward me. He was walking up from the moat to the right of us. As he approached, he said something along the lines of, right Greeley then walked straight past us into the solid 12-foot rock wall. In a complete state of shock, my colleague and I just confirmed with each other what we'd seen, that somebody had walked into a solid wall and vanished. Not gone over, not walked past, but walked directly into. We raised the alarm for an intruder just in case, but after a site-wide search, we never found anything of this guy who had walked up the slope. As a kid, maybe 11 years old, I was once in the forest looking for lost things. Then I came across a small pond really a small pool in the forest. A woman was standing in the water. The water reached her knees. She was looking to the other direction and I couldn't see her face. She had white hair and some old looking clothes. They looked extremely old fashioned. She didn't turn to me and she didn't move at all, but I could see her breathing. I came closer and then she left the water and stood on the forest ground. As she was raising her feet from the water, I saw that her feet were backwards. I was shocked, frozen, but I freaked out and finally turned around and began to run. As I was running, I looked back and I could see her face. She was looking at me with this evil grin and an extremely pale face. I went home and told the story to my parents, and of course, they did not believe me. I've never forgotten this encounter, and I was wondering if anybody else had any accounts of people having backwards feet. I went to this forest multiple times afterwards with my friends, never alone again, but I couldn't even find the pond, let alone the woman, anymore. The closest thing I've found on the internet is the Saguapa. As soon as I saw a picture of one, it gave me chills. The woman I saw looked exactly the same, but she was extremely pale. Everything else looks the same though. I'm fairly certain that this is what I saw, but I'm also open to any other ideas.
My boyfriend and I went to visit family in New York, and we stayed at the Hyatt Grand Central. I believe that there's a paranormal world due to having experiences in my childhood home. I also know that Grand Central Station is known to be haunted. Our hotel was connected to the station, but I didn't think anything of it. Of course, ghosts can't travel from building to building, or so I thought. It was our last night, and I was asleep. I woke up to the sound of the hotel doorknob moving, as if somebody was trying to come in, but I never heard the door open. I closed my eyes and said to myself, you're just imagining things. I heard it again, and I looked up. When you walk into this room, there's this long walkway, and the bed is to the right. I looked up, and I swear to Jesus and all of his disciples that I saw a man, a tall figure with black eyes, peek around the corner. I screamed, somebody's in here. As soon as I screamed, he disappeared, and I heard the doorknob again, as if he had walked out. My boyfriend jumps out of bed, butt naked, and runs around the room. The door was locked, so I don't believe it was an actual person, because hotel doors are heavy, and you can usually hear when somebody opens and closes them. Of course, you can't lock the door behind yourself. I only heard the doorknob move, but never heard the door, so we figured it was a spirit. I later found out that there are tunnels from the hotel to the train station, and many people have died in the tunnels. Beautiful hotel, but I will not be returning. When I was a young child, about 10 or 11, I moved into a small country town. I've been there before, and my parents grew up there. Everyone who lives there knows that the whole town is haunted, from the school and even the church hall to everything else. And once it goes dark, most people who live there go inside because you can see spirits walking in dark places, and that's pretty much the extent of it. But the house that I lived in had a spirit who likes to mimic voices, specifically of your loved ones, and even likes to look like them. It would only target me and my older sisters, and only when we were home alone. I would wake up with bruises and scratches, same as my sister. One time I was home alone and heard my older sister call out for me from our room. I got up and saw her walk into our room, just slightly, but I could tell it was her. I called her name, but she didn't answer, so I followed her in. I entered our room and saw that it was empty. I thought that she was messing with me, but she's pretty tall, so there wasn't really anywhere she could hide. Then, suddenly, I heard the front door open. I went and saw my older sister, with the rest of my family, coming home. She hadn't been there. This wasn't the first time that something like this happened, and it certainly wasn't the last. Fortunately, I moved out of there about two years ago, and I've never woken up with a random bruise or scratch ever again. Traveling back to Seattle through Olympic National Forest, Redditor Angry111 pulled over to photograph the forest. What they saw as they turned to leave will haunt them for the rest of their lives. This is their story. Last night, I was returning to Seattle after visiting Forks. Along the way, I passed through Olympic National Forest. It was incredibly dark, snowing a ton, and as I was about 50 miles from Forks in the direction of the Ho Rainforest, I was in the darkest part of the forest. Perhaps I should have just driven straight through, but the pines are absolutely gorgeous this time of year, 
and, not one to be deterred from a good nature shot, I decided to pull over. Yes, it was dark, but my phone has a night mode, and I figured this would be as good a time as any to put it to the test. I took some photos and then lowered my phone. As I did, however, I noticed something crouched on a stump. The figure was that of an extremely tall and skinny humanoid figure, with long arms that hung down in front of it, too long to be a person's. The thing was stark white and stood out drastically against the backdrop of pines and winter night. What chilled me to the bone, though, was that it had no eyes. Suffice it to say, I quickly re-entered my car and took off, content to get home in one piece and without having any unnecessary encounters with whatever that thing was. I only saw it for a moment, but if you ask me, it was a moment too long. I can't explain what I saw, and maybe it's better that way. wondering if anybody has any information about the Omni Bedford Springs in Pennsylvania. I live very close, and I used to go there daily to swim. It flooded when I was a child. In the early 2000s, Omni bought it and restored it, while adding on as well. Construction workers reported many strange occurrences. It was James Buchanan's summer White House, it was a facility to hold foreign diplomats during the wars. The springs are known to have healing properties. I have always felt a presence in the old section of the main hotel. I swam laps there for years in the famous pool. One day, they were filling the pool, and the hose was still. They fill it using the natural spring water from the mountain. About 15 minutes later, it looked as if a child was holding it and playing with it swinging it around. My friend and I always swam together, and we both saw it. And then, we both saw it suddenly stop. On other occasions, we would hear splashing when nobody was in the pool. One time, I felt a huge movement in the water while swimming. Nobody was there, though. We were the only ones there, and my friend wasn't in the pool. We also spotted a gentleman at the top of the stairs to the balcony, where the band used to play for the pool, but nobody was there when we looked again. I have also sat in the library many times reading while waiting on my friend to arrive, or before I hit the road. I would hear sounds. I'm not sure what the room used to be, but the windows are scratched from brides testing their diamonds, I was told. They also have some of the guest ledgers there. All of the things that happened to me were between 3 in the morning and 6 in the morning. Does anybody have any idea what's going on there? So, I'm doing this challenge this year where I'm hiking at a new location every week. Yesterday, I was hiking with my friend in East Texas. He has indigenous blood, and so he's very sensitive to spirits. Anyway, we were a mile and a half into this trail, deep in the woods. It's Tuesday, around noon, so this state park is empty. I start seeing shadows of animals, I'm assuming. First, a white furry animal to my left then a large black shadow, about knee height, of what looked like a boar in front of me. I told my friend, and he just said, oh, that's weird. We walk a couple more steps, and he sees a person ahead, but there's no one there. At least I didn't see it. We brush it off, whatever. Maybe our eyes are playing tricks on us, and when he looks again, he can't see the person either. We move on. And then, all of a sudden, the air around us starts to feel super heavy and dark. Both of our chests start feeling tight, 
and there's pressure in the air. We both started hearing voices of people chattering on the other side of the wall of trees to our left. I was assuming that it was a campsite because this park has so many campsites everywhere. We turn the corner of the trees and literally no one is there, no campsite either. We both looked at each other and said our own protective prayers and kind of booked it out of there as fast as we could. It felt like we had stepped through a dark curtain or portal of some sort, because when we passed that little river and creek, everything felt lighter. The weight was lifted off our chests and we had to stop and breathe and kind of reassess what had just happened. I don't know if anybody else has experienced something like this, but it was definitely odd. Over the weekend, I was out of dental floss. I can't stand that. So I looked around for a forgotten roll. I looked in my son's bathroom as well. Nothing. On Tuesday night, my son and I went shopping and I picked up a floss, Tom's, that I had never tried before. I grabbed one because I'm very picky about floss and I was not sure whether or not I would like it. My son then asked if he could get one too and of course I said yes. We go home and my son unpacks the groceries. The two boxes of floss are on the counter. I take mine upstairs, unwrap it, throw the box in the bathroom trash and try it that night. I hated it. Last night I go to floss again and there is now a second one in the drawer. The exact same. I think, well that's weird. Why did my son bring his floss into my bathroom? But I forgot about it because sometimes he uses my bathroom, so whatever. This evening, I'm cleaning up the kitchen and there's his dental floss on the counter, unopened. I go back upstairs. There are still two flosses in the drawer. They're both completely new except that the one that I have used has of course a slightly smaller roll the containers are transparent so you can see it. But I had never tried that kind before and I only bought one, so how did I end up with two? I hate to admit it, but I have often read accounts of things like this happening with more skepticism. I always figured that people just forgot that they had two of something because the items are so often insignificant. But here I am, in the possession of a mystery floss. I'm kind of honored and excited by the possibilities of what this could mean, but that's my glitch story. In 2014, my grandmother turned 86. She lives in Vietnam and we live in Canada, but we decided that that should be the year we finally visited. It was my first time visiting my ancestral homeland. We've never really been able to afford a family trip to Vietnam before, but my mom convinced my dad since she hadn't seen my grandmother, her mom, since 2006 when she visited us in Canada. We bought tickets in April and scheduled for August. Unfortunately, my grandmother passed away in June. It sucked hard. Anyway, the Vietnamese have this superstition that for 49 days after someone dies, their spirit is still hanging around our mortal plane, waiting to be judged or reincarnated or whatever. So maybe three weeks after she died, one of my aunts was just tending to her market stall per usual. This frail old woman, most likely homeless, suddenly walks up to the stall. She starts talking to my aunt, saying something along the lines of, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I didn't want to leave you all so early. Speaking distinctly in a maternal tone, almost on the verge of tears. It was pretty shocking and unexpected, obviously. 
Right after she said that, the old woman's whole body shook. A couple of seconds later, this lady regained her senses, looked around kind of confused, and walked off. My aunt told us this when we visited in August, and I couldn't sleep that night, so thanks for that, auntie. They also believe that my grandmother chose to speak to my aunt through the old woman, because frail, weak people close to death themselves are believed to be easier to take control of. That's about all I know about that, but I thought I'd share. Three years ago, my wife and I moved into a house. It was built in the 80s, but it was in great shape and it didn't cost much. We were excited for such a great deal. We bought it and started renovation on it, which lasted about a year. We moved in and for the first month or so, it was great. Well, one night while my wife was at work, I was laying in bed when I heard a little pitter patter. It was coming from the attic and the door was located directly over my bed. I panicked, being a believer in ghosts and stuff, and I ran to the living room and slept there. The next morning, I told my wife about it, who brushed it off as raccoons or something. She bought some traps and put them up there before going to bed. There were no pitters that night, and in the morning, there were no animals in the trap. She reset them and we left for the day. We got back late and went to bed. The next morning, she found a squirrel in one of the traps. Problem solved. She let it out and we both forgot about it. Well, two months ago, it started up again. Every single night this time. It sounds like something small, running back and forth across the floor of the attic. Every time it happens, I wake my wife, who's a very deep sleeper. But it always stops the second she wakes up. She's never heard them and thinks that I'm either crazy or that it's animals again. We've put more traps and she's gone up there and found nothing at all. My sister recently adopted a little girl and when she runs, it sounds exactly like the noises I hear. I'm convinced that there's a little kid ghost up in the attic. I've told my wife this and she's told me that it's nothing and to just forget it, but I can't. I heard it last night, and I know that I will hear it tonight as well. One night, my sister's friend, who we'll just call Sally, was still at our house after my sister had fallen asleep at about 10 p.m. She asked me if I would walk her halfway home, and I said yes. It was just down a hill, and then you just walked one street, and then there was like a cut to over to her street from there. But mind you, it's the middle of December, and it's really cold. So we walked to the stop sign, and we were both like, nope, and turned around, because it was freezing cold. We could easily beg my aunt to give her a ride because it wasn't that far. So as we're walking back, we stopped at my next door neighbor's house, which isn't actually occupied. It's completely rusted out. It's actually owned by a sheriff that comes by like once a week to work on it. It's been like that for about the last three years, but my old neighbor lived there for about 20 years before he finally sold it to the sheriff for like $5,000. Anyway. We stopped at the house because we kept hearing weird noises from the side of the house. It almost sounded like cats, so we started calling them. Then they started hissing in a weird way. And then we saw their legs. They were long and skinny and super pale. I don't know what it was, but we just ran to my house and we told my cousin's dad to go look. And he didn't, of course. Maybe it was just a weird cat, but those legs were so abnormal. I've never seen anything like it. 
and their sound changed when we became aware of it and started calling it. It was like as soon as whatever those things were knew that we knew they were there, their whole demeanor just changed. It was so weird. This happened two summers ago. It's short, but confounding. I was with two friends in my truck. I was driving, and it was dark, but not necessarily late, probably about 10 p.m. We were traveling to Page, Arizona, Lake Powell area, from Durango, Colorado, and we had to pass through Cayenta, Arizona, part of the Navajo reservation. Now, I had been to Cayenta before several years prior with a friend of mine who grew up there. We spent an entire day just having a great time with his people. But as soon as the sun started dropping, his mother and grandmother were insisting that we get off the reservation before dark. I knew it had a reputation for the weird, as many reservations do at night. At least that's what I'm told. Flash forward to this trip, and my two friends and I are in the truck. It's a long, straight, unlit, two-lane road with classic red desert on both sides in the daylight anyway. Not that we could see that at night. There's another vehicle coming the opposite way, and there's no crossroad in that stretch. That's important, because right before we go past each other, something I can only describe as metallic went streaking right between us, perpendicular, like feet away from both of our bumpers. It looked to be about the size of an SUV, no lights or discernible shape, but it seemed smooth. It's a weird comparison, but that speeding bullet in Mario Kart is actually what came to mind when it happened. All three of us saw it, and I think the other people did too, because I saw them hit the brakes in the rear view. It was super weird, and I still don't really know how to explain it. In this story, user Mischievous Dagger tells about the haunted house they lived in when they were growing up. Growing up, I always had to move from one place to another. There was this apartment in particular that terrified me. I was about seven or eight when weird stuff started happening. Basically, things would go missing, things got moved, I would hear footsteps in the hallways. Once, my dad heard somebody or something small running. He thought it was my sister and called her, but nobody answered. When he came to check on me and my sister, he found us both fast asleep. We always shared a room. One time, my mom baked a cake at night. I don't know why she decided to bake it at night, but she did. At night, we heard muffled chewing sounds. It wasn't my parents, as they had gone to sleep hours before that. Their room was in front of mine, and I would have seen them coming out. The next day, we found half of the cake gone. Another time, my dad bought a GPS. He was very happy with it and put it on the table. The next day, it was gone. My sister and I didn't touch it because my dad was very strict, and we used to be scared of what would happen if we touched his things. My mom was home all day, but she's a busy woman and couldn't have cared less about a GPS. It was gone for a week. Then one day, my dad called my mom asking her where she'd found it. It was right where he had left it, and my mom had never touched it. This freaks me out the most, though. I had a saint. A paper with a saint on it. We call it a saint here. No matter how many times I got rid of the saint, it always came back. I ripped it apart so many times. I shredded it. But it always returned whole to my desk. I no longer live in that house, but every time I walk by it, I get this feeling of dread. A 
As we speak, I am babysitting two little girls in an old New England manor. The two girls are upstairs in bed, and I have both baby monitors. The oldest is already asleep. The youngest is whispering. I hear her say, what? Why? Why? And then I hear, always turns back into the dog. Pretty sure the dog is laying at my feet. Somebody come keep me company. Update. The parents finally came home. I was called pretty unexpectedly to come babysit, which is unusual for this usually very well-planned family. They were in a rush to leave and told me it would only be for a couple of hours. Turned out to be five. That made me nervous right there. They returned saying that they were in a rush because the dad had been bitten on the chest and they needed to go to the hospital without stressing anybody out. Doctors were unsure and gave him antibiotics. Earlier today, the microwave went on the fritz and started melting everything on the outside of the microwave. They had me check on it all night. Now that I'm seriously thinking about all of these things, I wonder if they all add up to something or if I'm just paranoid. In January, when I babysat them last, I fell at the bottom of the stairs. I stood up and I fell again and sprained my ankle pretty badly. I chalked it up to black ice. But of course, now I'm second guessing that too. There was blood spattered on the youngest girl's bed sheets. She said she had three nosebleeds in one week. Maybe this could all be unrelated, but I'm starting to think that something pretty malicious is going on there. But what do I know? I'm just the babysitter. This story was posted to r slash paranormal by user accomplished work 454. When he and his friends were playing in a forest nearby their home as kids, they encountered something that they're unlikely to forget anytime soon. Here's the story. I am from Ohio in the United States. When I was in the fourth grade, 10 years old, I'm 19 now, my buddies and I were out in the woods behind my buddy's house. We were always back there growing up. There was a creek that we would hop over and just on the other side was a farm with some horses. One day, we had just jumped over the creek, but were still in the woods right by it. That's when we heard what sounded like a little girl's scream at the top of her lungs. Being young kids, we all just froze, thinking it was odd to hear such a vibrant scream in the middle of the day. About five to seconds later, right in front of us, a black figure zoomed across some bushes and shrubs at lightning speed. We all looked at each other and bolted out of the woods to my buddy's house. We were all in shock about what we had seen, and to this day we still talk about how creepy it was. It moved so fast that there's no way it could have been human. And where I live, the only wild animals we have are white-tailed deer, coyotes, and foxes. This thing was at least six to seven feet tall and was black enough to look like a shadow or something. It didn't look like it was absorbing any light at all, or that it was absorbing so much that it was the darkest black I've ever seen. I'm curious if anyone else in Ohio, or the United States for that matter, has ever seen anything similar. I live right by the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, so maybe there have been some sightings there. Even though this wasn't in the National Park, just a small patch of woods in a pretty suburban area. Redditor's psychological aunt 8611 posted a story that happened to him on a hiking expedition. Here it is. As a young man, I loved to climb mountains. This is an amazing encounter that occurred to me on one climbing expedition. We had left a hut late one night. The intention was to summit a mountain in a single long push by climbing right through the night. 
It was bad weather in the middle of winter, and there was deep snow. We were trying to find our way through a maze of crevasses on a glacier. I remember the howling winds and clouds moving rapidly through the sky as the bulk of the mountain loomed over us. There was a full moon, which would hide behind the clouds before emerging again. I remember seeing a man moving up the slope from below us. The first thing that struck me was that he didn't have a headlamp on. I yelled over the wind at my climbing partner. Let's go talk to this guy. What guy? He shouted back. That guy, I said, pointing down at the figure moving toward us. There was a pause. What guy? At this point, I remember losing it. That freaking guy right there. He's right there. And at that point, I looked back down to see absolutely nothing. Thinking he had fallen into a crevasse, we walked down, but we never found any tracks. There was no trace of anyone. In the years since, I have heard reports of similar encounters in that area. In fact, recently, the bones of a deceased climber from the 1970s were discovered, melted out of the ice. The news report reminded me of my mysterious climber from that night, and it just makes me wonder. I've witnessed paranormal activity since the age of seven. I'm 26 now, and I experience this activity wherever I go. It started with my sister and a group of her friends playing with a Ouija board when we were younger. My sister and her friends were between the ages of 10 and 12. I was seven. My grandmother told me that because I was the youngest and the most innocent of the group, something latched on to me. I have many stories to tell, but I'll tell some of the shorter stories now. My mom saw a black figure which looked like a person, crawling on all fours with dislocated joints coming down the hallway, wearing one of my Halloween masks. When my mom turned to face it, it disappeared. She screamed my name, thinking it was me trying to scare her, but that's when she saw that I poked my head out of the day room. Her face completely lost color. She had me go into my room and dig out the Halloween mask. It was a skull faceplate with horns around the top. She said that the figure was wearing it and that she wanted it out of the house. On three separate occasions, my grandmother had woken up to a little boy wearing an early 19th century sailor suit when she looked closely at him. She could see that his skin was pale and it was dark blue and black around his eyes and lips. Another time, I was playing with my dog by throwing a blanket over my head, and he would pull the blanket off. My dog started to whimper and cry, and before I could take the blanket off to see what was wrong, I heard a deep, raspy male's voice breathe heavily in my ear and then exhale. My dog then proceeded to freak out and bark. I could probably write a thick chapter book with all the things that I have seen, but hopefully these stories interest you. I wasn't sure where to tell this story, and I probably sound crazy but this definitely happened. A while ago, I was on the bus back home with my little girl. We had just had a really fun day out. I felt this strong energy and I wanted to investigate, but with my awkwardness, I just kept my head down. Although I kept thinking, what is it about that group of older women that was in the front? And why does it feel like this energy is coming from that direction. This was not just somebody giving off vibes. The feeling was so intense. I'm usually good at reading people, but this just hit different. It wasn't bad either. 
It felt warm, inviting, familiar, and so intense that it made the air around me feel tight, but not in a suffocating way, like a hug from your grandma. I decided to properly look, and this woman caught my attention straight away. Not long after, it was her stop, and I never saw her again. A week ago, on the way home again, I feel this energy again. I look up and lo and behold, it's the same woman. At this point, the energy was so intense that I nearly got teary eyed. She started to smile at me when I started feeling that way, but not in a creepy way, just kind of happy. She was sat on the folding down chairs at the front and kept looking down the aisle. I knew she was noticing me, but not making direct eye contact. It felt like she knew that I knew. I know this may sound ridiculous, and it was just based off of a feeling, but it's a feeling I haven't been able to shake. I'm still not entirely sure what happened, if anything. But it was interesting, and I wanted to share. One day, I decided to go to an old cemetery in San Diego, California, in a town called Julian. This town was home to gold miners and citizens that built the town. The average year on the tombstone was 17 to 1800s, some ranging into 2000 to 2008. We went out there around the time of 12 p.m., just going around asking basic questions of anything that might be there. I stumbled on a gated burial dating 1825. I asked if he was there while someone was taking a video and pictures. All of a sudden, I got so tired and drained that I felt like we had to go. I felt like I was being attacked. When we got to the car, we reviewed the photos first. What I saw was disturbing. White, blue, and green lights flying all around me. Listening to the audio was even scarier. I heard an old man with a deep crackly voice laughing and saying Marissa, and then I heard growling noises. I asked to leave immediately after hearing this. We were driving away and about a half mile to a mile out, our car started doing really frightening stuff. The radio would turn on and off, headlights would stop working, our mirrors kept moving dramatically, the lights in the car were turning on and off. We pulled over, we were so scared. Eventually it stopped and we drove off, scared and confused as to what had just happened. When we arrived home, we could hear voices and banging in the house. We didn't sleep at all that night. I never did return, and until this day, eight years later, I can still hear that voice, and I hate driving by that cemetery. I work as a service manager at a Chipotle that is rather understaffed. As the manager, I'm the last one out, and due to staffing, that's usually pretty late. To make matters worse, I commute by bike, so I like to get changed when I finish all my work. This means I'm usually alone for at least 15 minutes in the basement of a strip mall, well after everyone else is gone. From the entire area, not just the restaurant. Because of this, I've heard strange noises and felt a presence behind me. And others have even mentioned being pushed down the stairs or have reported things being thrown down. We have cameras that look down the staircase and trust me, it's pretty weird to watch what happens. But the worst was that one night I was here alone until 2 a.m. doing a full inventory. The last employee left at 12.45. The building was locked down and there wasn't a single other person in the entire strip. But by 1.15, I heard a man and a woman arguing. The sounds were coming from the solid concrete walls. 
Around 1.30, I heard breathing coming up toward me, so I slammed the office door shut. That didn't stop the breath from coming up to my neck. I could feel pressure on my shoulders. That subsided at 1.50. At 2.10, I was getting changed in the storage room and took my bike out to set the alarm. The second I set the alarm, I hear the sounds of stomping boots running through the kitchen toward the back door, where I was currently in the process of getting out of there. I have never left a building so fast in all my life. My name is Josh and I am 26 years old. I was an only child and I didn't have very many friends, so I spent a lot of time alone. When I was about 11, I moved in with my grandparents. They lived in a small town, pretty rural, and I spent most of my days, especially on the weekends, outside walking around. There was an old cemetery within walking distance of my grandparents' house that had graves dating back all the way to the late 1600s in the oldest section. The newest graves were no younger than the late 90s and early 2000s. It was pretty run down since the newest graves, like I said, were in the 90s and 2000s. The oldest section was even more run down. I felt bad that these people were seemingly just forgotten and nobody ever visited them. My grandma owned a flower shop, and she had a bunch of excess flowers, so I asked her if I could take some to put on some of the graves in the cemetery. She agreed, and I took about four bags full and walked to the cemetery. I got there and started walking around, putting flowers on all the graves. I went through the newest section, putting flowers on the graves without incident. I had gotten through about four graves in the oldest section, when something just told me to look up. I looked up and saw a woman, just standing there, directly behind the grave that I had just put flowers on. She was smiling at me, and she seemed to be so happy. I stood face to face with her for about a minute, and then she disappeared. Then I went on putting flowers on the rest of the graves, and I left. I think maybe she was just happy that somebody was coming to visit. I don't know, but it was really special. This is something my grandma told me. It was summer in the late 70s. My grandpa was stationed in California while my grandma, mom, and uncle were living in Oklahoma. My grandma and great-grandpa decided to take a trip with the kids to visit my grandpa in California. They made it there safely and had a really good time while they were there. The morning they left, my great-grandpa called my great-grandma back in Oklahoma to let her know they were about to hit the road. It was about a three-day drive, taking the scenic route and stopping to sleep at rest stops. It was a normal trip, my mom and her younger brother playing in the back seat. They had made it to New Mexico and were only about eight hours away from home when they were suddenly hit by a freak blizzard. They could barely see where they were going, so they were driving slowly and looking for somewhere safe to pull over and wait out the storm. They saw a bunch of lights on the road coming toward them and assuming it was emergency vehicles, they pulled over to the side of the road to let them pass. The next thing they know, an officer tapped on their window waking them all up and asking them to move along. They were confused, but just kind of brushed it off, thinking maybe they had just decided to sleep where they were rather than continue driving through the blizzard. Except when they started to look around, there was no snow. There was no sign whatsoever of any storm. They stopped at a gas station and my grandma said something to the attendant about the storm. He didn't say anything, but looked at her like she was nuts. They got back on the road and were home that evening. When they got home, my great-grandma was in a full panic, asking them what the hell happened to them. Apparently, it had been 10 days since my great-grandpa called to say they were heading home. 
They all have an entire week of their life missing, and they have no idea what happened to them or where they were during that week. This happened three to four years ago, and I've been thinking about it recently. It was late one night, around 11.30 p.m., and I was driving home from my job at Sonic. I was taking US Route 64 home, which is a fairly desolate stretch of road, with houses and farmland on either side. I was in my 99 Ford Explorer, and I was just driving along around 65 to 70 miles per hour, with the radio on low volume. As I'm driving, through the sunroof comes a bright green ray of light that envelops the interior of my vehicle. This lasts for about two to three seconds. Then, it disappears without a trace. After that happened, I just sped up and got home as quickly as possible. I was only about five minutes away. That's really about all there was to it, but I was really freaked out. I have pondered and pondered, but I have no clue what that could have been. I wasn't tired because I woke up at around five or six that day, and I have no history of any illnesses that could have caused this. I wasn't on any medications. I've told a few people, and I don't think that they believe I'm lying. I've never been the kind to lie about that kind of thing, but no one can give me a solid answer either. Some have said maybe it was a laser, but I don't think there's any way a laser could completely cover my vehicle in green light like that. There was a farm that I was passing by, but it wasn't lit and there were no street lights. I have no idea what it was that I encountered. in a mountainous recreation area, well after dark, by myself, with no flashlight or camping equipment. I had planned on meditating and fasting all night. At about 10 p.m., I decided that I was hungry, and I started walking down off the ridge that I was on. All of a sudden, there's something big in the darkness. I hear its footsteps in the grass. It sounds very heavy and very large. I got really scared and I started talking to it, pleading it to leave me alone, that I was just going down the hill and that I just wanted to pass and I didn't want any trouble. I started singing some kind of song and I found two rocks and started banging them together. I made it past the place that I last heard it moving, which was only about 14 feet from me. I heard it shift its weight it was still there, but it didn't walk. The comforting part was that it wasn't moving toward me. The scary part was that all my forceful talking and shouting and noise making hadn't scared it at all. I had to stay close to its position because I was on a steep ridge. Something that wasn't afraid of me out there could only have been a bear or something paranormal. The last I checked, bears don't exactly understand human language and don't negotiate with you if you ask them to let you pass. I don't know. I banged the rocks together all the way down the hill so it could hear me moving away. I'm not really sure what this was, and sometimes I think that I'm just fine never knowing. This took place in Poland, probably in January. It happened about six months ago. I just had a chat with my friend and I recalled the memory. During winter, I used to go on these short hikes to my local forest. Most of the time, nothing out of the ordinary happened. The most unusual thing was seeing a wolf pack once and that's it. 
But this event happened at about 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning. The weather was quite cold, about negative 10 degrees Celsius, and snow was lightly falling. There were no people out that day. One hour into the woods, I heard it. This weird music, which seemed to come from all directions at once, and it kept getting louder. It sounded like muffled piano, and something resembling jingles could be heard too. It went on for a solid minute, and then slowly faded away. I was so weirded out that I didn't even take my phone out at first, but when I finally did, I realized that my phone had turned off, probably because of the temperature. After the music stopped, I decided to finish my hike anyway, as I found it more in the category of weird than frightening. The other strange thing, though, is that when I go out hiking, I always see deer, wild boars, hares, and other animals. There was not a single living being to be seen after I saw the music. What could it have been? I'll start out by saying that I've seen my fair share of strange things in the skies, but one memory will always stand out amongst the others. I've done the math and I believe it was fall of 2005. I was in sixth grade, outside on the phone with my first boyfriend. I'd say it was between six to eight o'clock Eastern time at night. It was dark outside and only our back porch light was on. I was talking up a storm and I was watching my two dogs roam the backyard. Out of nowhere, it was like somebody turned on a blue light above us, the dogs and I. It was a bright, beautiful electric blue. I immediately looked up and saw what I can best describe as the shape of an eye, but perfectly symmetrical in the same blue color. It was lined with an almost holographic looking light a constantly changing rainbow of colors. I stared for maybe two seconds before it closed up, leaving only the colorful outline. It immediately shot to the left like a shooting star and disappeared. In shock, I told my boyfriend I would call him back and I immediately ran to my parents who were folding clothes in the bedroom. I shouted at them, I just saw aliens. They laughed at first and told me to stop joking, but my father knows my eyes. He saw my panic and quickly changed the subject. I've never forgotten this moment. I can still see it so clearly, even to this day. What did I see? Why did I see it? Can anyone help? This took place in a small city in Alaska where I grew up. One night at approximately 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., I was lying awake. I'm a very light sleeper and I often have trouble falling asleep. At about that time, I started hearing what sounded like an obnoxious mix of possibly a clarinet or a trumpet playing loud screeches, no harmony, just squeaks and honks in the cold night air. I sat for a while on my bed. I couldn't sleep. It was loud enough for me to hear inside. I went out the front door and stood on the porch and just listened. It sounded like whoever was playing it was a few blocks away. But at the same time, it was as though you could hear it in every direction. It was autumn and very cold at the time. I was so frustrated by the screeching in the late hour that I actually yelled out, shut up, thinking it was a kid playing a prank. About a year or two later, when I had nearly forgotten about it, I heard the sound again, this time in the daytime in the winter air. It lasted for a few hours and then quit. 
It wasn't until probably five years after this that I watched a video on YouTube called Trumpets in the Sky about people around the world hearing the exact same noises and not being able to find any explanation for them. It literally gave me the chills. But now it has me wondering, has anyone else experienced the same thing? When my friend and his brother were kids, they went on a trip to the Philippines to visit family. Their grandfather there had gifted them a slingshot. Boys being boys, they found a nearby tree outside of the house and started firing away. One of their relatives, I think auntie, told them to stop because the tree was inhabited by a duende. In Filipino folklore, duende can be any sprite-like creature goblins, gnomes, elves. In this case, their family believed that it was a dwarf. Duende live in abandoned houses, mounds, and trees. They can bring good or bad luck depending on how they're treated. It's believed that if you provoke them, they can cause sickness or death. Well, neither of my friends decided to listen to their auntie's warning to stop using the tree as target practice. The next day, the older brother wakes up with a high fever and felt so weak that he couldn't even walk. The younger brother had a cut on his eye that was swollen to the point of where he couldn't even see out of it. Strange thing about the cut though, he said it wasn't painful at all. Their grandpa made an offering, I think it was rose oil, and went to the tree to ask for forgiveness, then applied the oil to my friend's foreheads as well. The swelling subsided and the fever was gone almost instantly. And that's their story about the duende in the tree, who did not appreciate its home being used in such a way. Our next story was posted to Reddit by a now-deleted user who tells about living in the most haunted town in Australia. Here's the fascinating story. So for context, the town I used to live in has frequently been referred to as the most haunted town in Australia, and I used to work in a bar on the town's main street, with parts of the building being over 100 years old. This bar, according to the stories, had three ghosts that lived in it, mostly in the old upstairs area which was no longer used as a public space and was just storage. None of these ghosts were at all malicious, but staff staying back late to close such as myself would frequently have sightings and encounters. That being said, the only time I was ever remotely unsettled by an encounter was with that of a young boy who, according to the stories, had died in a fire. In this upstairs storage area was an old photograph of this boy, and to put it simply, he moves in the photo. Now, he never moves while someone is watching, but you would look at the photo, look away for a second, and when you looked back, the boy would be in a completely different position. I saw this happen on several occasions, and the only reason I know that it wasn't just a trick or me going crazy is due to several of the bar's staff members having confirmed seeing the same thing. I don't think it's anything bad, just a little boy playing around, but it really used to weird me out. And honestly, it still kind of does. I just got home from work an hour ago. I have these dreams every night where this Japanese girl is always riding shotgun in my dream car, which is a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. The dreams have been getting a little too realistic for my taste. For example, she has a whole name, 
first, middle, and last. Either way, the dreams almost always consist of she and I just driving around and laughing at some dumb jokes. Well, tonight on my way home, I decided to glance over to the passenger side mirror, and she's just sitting there. Same hair, same clothes. It was her. I'm not sure why, but I wasn't really unnerved by it in any way. That is, until she looked over to me and smiled. I smiled back and she was gone. Poof, she just vanished as if she was never there. Hell, the seatbelt was even undone. I'm honestly not sure how to feel about this. I'm guessing that in another reality or universe, I'm dating the girl of my dreams and maybe there was some kind of overlap. I guess dreams could be realities. Maybe they're alternate realities. But could there be an actual meaning behind all of this? I still can't figure it out. What's even weirder is that I did some Googling about her name and I can't find anybody that exists with those names put together, first, middle, and last. I have no idea what's going on. This is not necessarily super creepy, but creepy enough in a sense that it gave me some peace. And I think maybe my grandma some peace too. It was around Christmas time. I was staying with my then boyfriend and I was staying over at his house, sleeping down in the basement. That night, I had a really strange dream. I was in a house and there was a party going on. When I was there, an older man approached me. He knew my name and I felt like I knew him, but I also knew that I had never met him in person and I couldn't place him. He was really sweet, very nice, and we just kind of stared at each other. It was like we were having a conversation, but we weren't. It was kind of strange. I felt so comfortable with him as a person does with a close family member. Finally, he said, Hey, tell your Nana I say hi. And I love her. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. And then I woke up. I told my grandma about it the next day and gave her some information on what the guy looked like. She started crying on the phone, saying, you just saw my dad. I guess he had died a few years before I was born, and I'm actually named after him partially. My middle name is Joe. Turns out his birthday was on December 31st. I believe he would have been 90 something. And the dream that I had was also on December 31st. Given that this happened in the middle of the woods at night in the Pacific Northwest, as well as the fact that I was a child when it happened, I understand that this could be almost anything. However, even at 23, recalling this moment still brings tears to my eyes and cold chills down my back. I was about 10 years old and it had to have been around 11 p.m. I was at a horse camp in Battleground, Washington and I was the only person awake in my cabin. I heard this sound far off in the distance. It sounded like a horse whinnying, which makes sense. Only it didn't stop. It was one long whinny that kept going. After about six to seven seconds, the pitch grew lower and lower until it turned into this god awful, low guttural scream. It went on for probably about 30 seconds with no pause. I know 30 seconds seems short, but when you're sitting there as a child with nothing between you and it but a screen door, it feels like ages. I never heard that sound again after that, 
and I know it's a very short story, but even now when I tell this story, it brings tears to my eyes. Other than Bigfoot, because I'm sure it's not that, is there any folklore pertaining to the Pacific Northwest that could account for this sound? I don't know of anything that starts out as a horse whinny, never stops, and ends up in a demonic growling scream. I would love to know what it was that I experienced. Maybe I won't be so afraid of it anymore. To start off, I'm not really a believer in the paranormal. I mean, sure, creepy things do happen, but never to the point of me thinking that it was definitely a ghost or whatever. But one night, a few days ago, it was nearly midnight, and I was on my bed, thirsty during a heat wave. So I get up, ready to get a Gatorade, and I open my door. I see this black and brown shadow figure. It was crouching, was six to seven feet tall, and zoomed across my living room into my dining room. To top things off, my cat saw it, definitely, because the cat reacted. So I go get my Gatorade, cause ain't no demon gonna stop me from quenching my thirst, and I get back to my room and think about it. It couldn't have been my door, it opens inward, and it couldn't have been one of my cats. Here's the worst part. My stepdad lived in a house with some paranormal stuff going on. I thought maybe it followed him. Maybe he brought some kind of demon into the house. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm haunted. I really don't know. But another experience was at my dad's house. I was in my room at the end of the hall, and I heard the slider in the kitchen open. Keep in mind it's at night, and everyone is in their respective rooms. So, being the guy I am, I take out a pocket knife and investigate. As soon as I open my bedroom door, the bathroom door next to my room slams shut. Now, I don't know if this could be connected to the first story, but it was really, really creepy nonetheless. I have no idea what's going on, but that's my story. I've had a couple of ghost encounters that really messed me up, but this one in particular was the worst. My mom was dating this guy, who wasn't like a super country guy, but not like a normal country guy either. He also had a son, who I still stay in close contact with to this day. Basically almost every Sunday, we would go out to my stepdad's mom's house. She lived in the middle of the woods, but not too secluded like there were other houses in the area. But directly across the dirt road, there was this abandoned house that pretty much looked exactly what you would expect an abandoned house to look like. My stepbrother and I would go in there every once in a while just for fun, and we would see some pretty weird stuff, like a random chair in the middle of a room, a cooler full of dead roses. But one day, we were headed in there like usual, but I took one step in and I wanted to throw up. My stepbrother kept going and was telling me it was fine and to just come in, but I was not going in there. A couple of minutes of talking go by and all of a sudden my brother's face turns pale as hell. He drops his water bottle and he runs out without saying a word. I follow him, asking him to slow down and he says that we're never going back in there again. When I asked why, he said that he heard a voice whisper in his ear and tell him to run. We never told our parents until like two years later. At the time, we were 12. And true to his word, we never went back in there again. One of my favorite pastimes is walking through and exploring cemeteries. I went to one that I've been to before, 
but due to its size, multiple trips had to be taken to explore all of it. I came across a grave with no name, no dates, nothing, except for forever in our hearts written on it. I hadn't really seen a grave with no name or date, so I stepped down to take a closer look at it. It was decorated with a pinwheel and a really old dead bouquet of flowers. There were other graves around it with some pinwheels as well. But when I stepped down to look at it, the pinwheel instantly started spinning. I didn't think much of it at first, until I backed off of it and it completely stopped as soon as my foot left. The other pinwheels around the surrounding graves weren't moving at all. It wasn't windy. I thought that it was weird that it stopped. So I went back and forth five times, crouching down to look at it and then stepping off of it. And every single time it would start and then stop whenever I crouched down to look at it and stepped back. It was changing speeds too. It did a slow two loop spin and then started going super fast. It may just be a weird coincidence, but I think otherwise. As I said earlier, I had been to this cemetery before. Every time I go, I always catch weird orbs, and I've gotten multiple apparitions too. So, at the very least, this place is full of energy. Back in April of 2011, my family and I stayed in Skyline Cabin C82 at Jellystone Park. It's the one right beside the nature trail. Each of us experienced something that we believed to be paranormal, but none of us admitted it to each other until after we had gotten home. It turns out that my sister, who was eight, and I, who was 11, actually saw the same figure at the same time. We don't remember the time of night, but both of us recall waking up for an unknown reason to find a tall man standing by the bed with his arms crossed and an angry look on his face. At first, we thought the figure was my dad and we were confused as to why he seemed angry with us. Then we realized we could see straight through the guy to my coat hanging on the wall. I quickly rolled over to the other side of the bed in fear as my sister slowly did the same. Later that night, my sister woke up again to see a man sitting at the dining table in the other room. She turned on her flashlight to see who it was and the figure disappeared. My mom also woke up during the night to see a white orb fly in through the window and out through the door. As soon as the light went through the window, she heard a voice scream, you don't belong here or you aren't welcome here, one of the two. Our stay at cabin C82 is something that we reminisce about often. We've been curious if anyone else has experienced anything strange there. So if you've stayed at Jellystone Park in Lori, Virginia and experienced anything paranormal, we would love to hear your story. A few months ago, three other friends and I went out to camp near a lake. We went camping on the shore of the lake, right next to a forest that went up a hill. It was nighttime and the sky was very clear. We had a fire going. And so one friend and I decided to go a bit farther near to the lake to look at the stars. You could see the Milky Way and everything. It was really cool. While we were there, we were talking a little bit, and I noticed a light in the forest, above where the other two friends were, and above where we were camping. It was really bright in the middle, like a white orb, and at first I thought it was a person with a flashlight. The next thing I know, it zipped in a straight line, super fast, then went back again, with the same speed. Then, 
instantly, it just disappeared. My other friend who was with me saw it, and we both got really freaked out. He is very religious and can't explain it to me, but still doesn't want to believe that it's anything paranormal. So I'm kind of alone in this. The other friends didn't see anything because it was behind them. I have no idea what it could have been. The weird thing was that it was at the moment we noticed it that it reacted and moved around and disappeared. I wonder if it had been there the whole time while we were camping. There would have been no way to see it. Only when we moved away and then faced toward our camp could we have seen it. I told my other friends about it and they thought I was just joking. And the friend who was with me and saw it doesn't want to talk about it. So I don't really have any good answers. For the rest of the camping trip, I felt really uneasy. This happened years ago when I was about 11, so I don't have any pictures of it, but my mom and I remember it very clearly. The house that we lived in at the time was built in the 1930s. It was a three floor house, but it was all separated into five apartments. My dad and I lived in the rear apartment and my mom lived in the attic apartment because my parents had split up. I was in my mom's apartment with her while she was working on something. I was lying in her bed on my phone and eventually I just zoned out looking at the wall. It was about 11 p.m. and she and I decided to walk to the gas station to get some snacks. The only way to get into the apartment was through the outside door into the apartment or through the fire escape. When we got back, the door and window were both locked. We always checked, so nobody had gotten in while we were gone. But when we got back, I went into where her bed was and sat down to eat. I picked up my phone and then I just looked over at the wall that I had been looking at before. I saw my name scratched into it. Then I noticed that below my name was my father's name and then my mom's name was halfway carved below my father's. It was really messy, but it was legible. We have no explanation for this, and we have since moved out of that house. We're pretty sure that it was paranormal, and my mom and I are still completely curious about what happened there. My parents own a sprawling three-story manor built in 1912. This house has a finished bedroom in the attic, which is mildly weird on its own. But when I turned 14 and was going into high school, I begged them to empty the junk out and let me live there. I thought it would be totally awesome, like having an apartment away from the rest of my family. They agreed I could do it and I got to paint it and put in new carpet and fill it with the furniture that I picked out. All vintage, because that's what I like. The place was awesome, but the door didn't quite fit into the jam anymore, so it would swing open on its own. I was not cool with having the door open to the rest of the attic in the middle of the night. I shut the door as tightly as it would go, and before bed, I jammed it shut with my desk chair. I mean, I really wedged it in there. I had my sister test, and the door would not budge from the attic side. Cool. I went to sleep. The next morning, I woke up feeling refreshed, until I noticed that the desk chair was tucked back under the desk. The door was shoved all the way open, so hard that it had actually dented the wall, and I had no explanation. To this day, all present family members swear they didn't do it, and I think I would have had to have heard them anyhow. I decided the ghosts in the attic didn't like me shutting them out. For the duration of my time living in the attic, several years, I left the door open, and nothing else really happened, so I guess all they wanted was some freedom. 
still, definitely freaked me out. After the death of their grandfather, Redditor Omastorm had an encounter that startled and comforted them. This is the story. A few years ago, my grandpa had passed away. He wasn't a very big believer in ghosts or anything regarding the paranormal, until he was in his older years. Well, I ended up inheriting his 86 T-Bird. Lots of history with that car between myself and my grandpa. Anyway, a few months after he passed away, I'm driving the car to work, listening to music, and just processing the fact that he was truly gone. The car is all I have left, or so I thought. I drive toward one of my work sites, and out of nowhere, I get a blast of the cologne he always wore. It was his favorite cologne to use whenever he was going out anywhere. I pull up to my work site and park the car, I can smell the cologne so strongly in the passenger seat, and I'm just staring at it like, there's no cologne in here, but why does it smell like grandpa's? It took me a solid two minutes to figure out that his spirit was in the car with me. His spirit had taken a ride with me to work that day. The cologne scent didn't dissipate one bit. It was honestly reassuring to me that he was still there, in a way. So yeah... Interesting and odd encounter for me, because of the fact that when he was alive, he wasn't really a strong believer in the afterlife. Well, I guess he proved himself wrong, because he still hangs around me whenever something's wrong. This Sunday gone, my girlfriend and I, who live in Adelaide, Australia, had just gone on a dinner date. She is a 26-year-old female and I am a 24-year-old female. We went to her house to drop off her doggy bag. Then we drove back toward my house, southward. About halfway between our houses, I noticed three lights in the sky in a perfect triangle. It was very odd and the lights were fairly obvious in the dark sky, especially because there were also stars visible, so the lights were very visibly different. They were a lot brighter and bigger, though not by much. I pointed it out to her, and immediately she said, Holy cow, what the heck is that? At first I thought I might be seeing things, but when she reacted, I knew it wasn't just my eyes playing tricks. We quickly noticed that the lights were moving at about the same speed we were, and had started to flash green and red sporadically. We decided to follow it for as long as we feasibly could. It was a bit of a thrill, if I'm being completely honest, following the mystery lights in the sky, but it also didn't last very long. Maybe five minutes past my house, the lights took a turn, sped up, and just disappeared. We pulled over to see if we could find it again, but we didn't have any luck. We kept talking about how strange and cool the whole thing was. I am telling my story here to see if anyone else has seen something like this, or has any ideas of what it could have been besides a UFO. Our first thought was a helicopter, but there's no realistic way for a perfect triangle of lights to come off of that, and they moved way too quickly. If anyone has ideas, I'd love to hear them. So I decided to post this after the sixth person who has come into my basement has said that they feel off, overwhelmed, and like they're being watched. I usually bring them down to play billiards, and I have my old PS2 and Xbox 360 down there as well. The basement is finished, painted, and carpeted, and there's an office down there too. 
They always leave saying that they all felt the same things and that they're so put off by it that they never want to go into my basement again. Yesterday, one of my friends left his mask in my basement, went back down to get it by himself and said that he felt like his heart was beating out of his chest. I also want to note that when we first moved in for the first month or so, we would find an unreasonable amount of dead centipedes across the basement floor, but only in the room with the billiards table. The office room never had a single centipede in it. All of a sudden, the centipedes just stopped. Never saw one again. It's been two years. I felt the same weirdness, but I always ignored it. I'm usually afraid of basements because I generally don't like being underground, so it wasn't unusual to me but then everyone else started talking about it. I've also noticed that my house has become more active, as in lights turning on and off when nobody's home, doors opening and closing for no reason, doorknobs jiggling aggressively, things moving to very peculiar places. I really don't know what to do with this. I grew up in Florida, in a house that was the original train station for the town we lived in. It was on nine acres of property that our landlord owned, with one acre of that being our neighbor that lived behind but to the left of our house. We shared a shale driveway to the left of our house, but we had a semi-circular driveway made of mulch that went around the back of the house and out to the main road. Suffice it to say that people either drove to our neighbor's house or into our driveway. No one came or went without at least passing our house. One afternoon after school, I was about 11 at the time, my dad met me at the door and said that he wanted to keep an eye out for a yellow car and that he wanted me to sit on the porch until I saw it. That day, I didn't see anything. But for about a week, he went on and on about a yellow car pulling in the shared driveway and revving the engine, and then taking off. That was his best explanation. Then, one day he yells for me to run to the bathroom window that faced that driveway. Right there was a car that wasn't so much yellow as it had a soft glow to it, even in the daylight. It was older, but I don't really know cars well enough to tell you what make or model. It just sat there, the engine revving for about 30 seconds, and then it disappeared. My dad wouldn't talk about it after that. He was out in our side yard watching it, and just like me, he didn't see a driver, just a yellow car that kept appearing and disappearing next to our house for about a month and a half total. After that, it never happened again, and to this day, I have no explanation. The experience that I'm relaying here happened to one of my best friends who stays with his grandmother who's in her mid eighties. One day, her daughter picked her up and they went shopping together. My friend Rob went into his bedroom to watch TV right after they left. About a half an hour later, he heard some noise coming from the kitchen. So he poked his head out the door to see what it was. He saw his grandmother in the kitchen facing away from him, digging furiously through her junk drawer, obviously searching for something. He just shrugged and went back into his room. Another hour and a half passes and he comes out into the living room. That's when he see his aunt's van pull up to the house and his grandmother and aunt come in carrying all of her parcels. He then became uneasy and asked her if she found what she was looking for in the kitchen. She looked at him like he was nuts and said that she had been gone for hours and that she had never been looking in the kitchen drawer that day. He then explained that he had seen her and that whoever it was had on the exact same clothes and the same hair. He started laughing, thinking that she was just trolling him, 
but his aunt looked very concerned and verified that they had not returned after their initial departure. Rob began to freak out, and when he told me what happened later that day, he was glad that he didn't see its face, whatever it was. I believe him, because he's never told a story even remotely close to this one, and he seemed really unsettled by the whole incident. Honestly, I would be too. I live outside of Melbourne, Australia. This is the crazy experience that I just had recently. I was outside on my deck having a smoke and I looked up at the sky. Suddenly, two stars appeared directly on top of each other, evenly spaced. Then a third star appeared directly under the second star, again evenly spaced. Another star appeared blinking and moving toward the first star, then went down toward the second, then down to the third, and then away. It was moving very slowly, and each star was blinking in a pattern. I called my partner outside to verify what I saw, and he confirmed that I wasn't crazy and witnessed the moving stars slowly move in patterns that normal craft or satellites couldn't move in. It was going up and down and away and then back at a consistent slow speed. Something clearly had control over it. It was remarkable. We checked again a little bit later and all three stars were gone. I chatted to my housemate about it. Sadly, he was in his room at the time and didn't witness it. He said that my friend and her partner that live about 15 minutes away witnessed the exact same thing months ago. I called my friend and she confirmed that they saw the exact same thing. And then her partner confirmed it as well. They even confirmed the direction they had seen it in from local landmarks and buildings, which completely matched the direction that we had seen it in. So four people have witnessed something similar in a space of like three months in our small town. Super weird. This happened to me when I was in high school, living with my parents. One night, I went out with friends. I drank a couple of beers and I went back home. I was just a little tipsy, not drunk, and I decided to take a shower before going to bed. It was about one to two in the morning. The shower cabin that we had wasn't fixed to the floor or the walls. It was like a capsule, but it was very heavy and hard to move. I entered the shower and after a few minutes, the cabin started swinging left to right, and it was very loud. I was standing, trying not to move, and it stopped. But as soon as I continued to shower again, it started swinging again. I stepped outside and there was my dad banging on the bathroom door, asking what I was doing because the noise woke him up. I just got dressed and went to bed. The next morning, my dad asked me again what that noise was, and I tried to explain what happened. He said that I was just drunk and fell in the shower, so I moved the cabin. But that did not happen. I know that it didn't happen. I wasn't drunk. I had had maybe two beers. And I was standing the whole time. I had never fallen. It moved by itself, something that should have been impossible. I went to the bathroom and tried very hard to move or swing the cabin back and forth, but it was impossible. I still have no idea what happened that night. My brother and I were staying the night at our grandma's house. For context, her house is in the middle of the ghetto. My brother and I were watching TV and my grandma was at the store. Suddenly my brother says, 
Want to go in the basement? Not trying to sound like I was weak, I said yes. Now, this was the worst decision of the month. So we go into the basement and it is really creepy. When we reach the bottom of the staircase, the door shuts behind us. I just shake it off as natural, but still a little uneasy. We go into the garage because her garage is in the basement. So we start going through there and we find a rusty pipe and a motorcycle handlebar and some faint writing on the wall. Obviously there were other things like lawnmowers and stuff like that. All of a sudden we hear BAM, like a metal door slamming. It was the laundry room door. So my brother and I are crabbing our pants so we run back upstairs scared out of our minds. Later that night we start to fall asleep. Grandma's asleep. And then we hear what sounds like all of the basement doors opening and slamming. My grandma's not awake and we end up falling asleep. We tell grandma about it the next day and she just laughs and says, oh, that's just Jim messing with you. Then she explains that Jim was the old house owner who died there. That didn't really help us but I guess it eased our minds a little bit. Last night, I woke up at around 2 a.m. I heard this soft yelling and was confused at first as to why somebody was out. Then, as I listened more, I realized there was a pattern to it. I wanted to get up to the window and see who was making that sound, thinking that they may just be a drunk person walking around the parking lot. But there was this overwhelming sense of dread that came over me. Like, if I looked outside, I would be drawn to go outside. And if I went outside, I would never come back. This rhythmic whooping continued on for easily 20 minutes and then stopped altogether. It was not an animal. I know this for sure. I've had paranormal experiences before, so maybe I'm easily spooked, but I think I was being lured outside. And even though it sounded human, I didn't get up to look. Now it's the morning after and I can't shake this feeling. Does this sound familiar to anyone else? Some kind of hunting practice for a known humanoid or cryptid? As a note, I live in an area of owls and wild birds and I hear them consistently throughout the week. I know what they sound like. I don't have coyotes or any big cats in my area. I listen to owls outside my window often and I can tell you that this was something different. I don't know how to explain it, but it almost sounded like a human trying to imitate an owl. I only immediately dismissed it as being a wild animal because it was so unlike anything I've ever heard. I would love to know what it could be. These experiences happened two to three years ago. I was around 13 to 14 at the time. The first experience occurred to me and my younger sister. It was around nine o'clock at night, not too late, but we were folding clothes and I heard a faint knock. I asked my sister if she had heard the knock, but she said no. I just shook it off because I thought it might've been a relative or something. But about 10 minutes later, we hear the knock again, and this time my sister heard it too. This time it was way louder. I mean, you might think that that's not scary or creepy, but the knock came from our window, and the window is only accessible to someone in the home, because the window is in our backyard and no outsider has access to the backyard. We immediately bolted out of the room because we were frightened. The next experience happened only to me. It was also around 9 p.m. at night, and I had gone into the kitchen for a cup of water. While I was pouring water, 
I heard a loud knock on the living room window. I got so scared that I yelled for my mom, who was in the other room at the time. She checked outside, but all she found was a rock. Everyone who lived in the house at the time said that someone had gotten a rock and thrown it at the window as a joke, but I disagreed. I disagreed because the rock that my mom found was only in our front yard, and our front yard gate was closed at the time. You need a key to be able to open it. I don't know though. What do you guys think? Was it a ghost or a person? At around 11 years old, I was in my room, sleeping on the top bunk. My sister was asleep on the bottom bunk. Across from my bed was my dresser with a large mirror. If you're laying and you look to the left, the mirror is there. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and looking at the mirror, and I saw what looked like myself sitting on the bottom bunk, staring at me through the mirror with a grin except she looked like she was sitting backwards so that she had to turn her head to look toward the mirror, if that makes sense. I was really confused and really creeped out. I stared at it for a while, thinking that maybe it was my sister. I even called out her name, but it wasn't. I strained my eyes to try and see better in the dim lighting, but I got too freaked out, so I turned around and tried to go back to sleep. The next morning, I find a handprint on the mirror. I was beyond spooked at this point. That house always had weird activity too. Bottles in the bathroom randomly crashing down. Once I heard a man shout, hey, when I was alone and leaving for school. Very strange house. I know some might say that this was a dream and maybe it was, but I know that I was wide awake. It felt so real. I remember it vividly. I remember trying to get back to sleep afterward. I'll never forget, though, the feeling of staring at myself, staring back at me, so menacingly. My husband saw my doppelganger in our hallway last night. We live in an old farmhouse, and we've had many paranormal and unexplained spirits, noises, and so on. We've had paranormal investigators over to our house, and we're waiting on the report. Last night, I was in the bathtub. My husband came into the bathroom to wash his hands and went back out to do laundry. He was in the laundry room, and looked through the kitchen and saw what he thought was me in the hallway. Apparently, I was buck naked. He called my name and he said that whoever this was turned her face toward him and gave him a look like she didn't know who he was. Then she walked a step behind a column and our son came out from the same column going the opposite way. Our son asked who my husband was talking to. When my husband said he was talking to me, my son said that I wasn't there. He'd never seen me. My husband came into the bathroom where I was still in the tub, and he made me swear up and down that I had never left the tub. He was very freaked out and made us follow him from room to room for the rest of the night and announce ourselves if we came into a room where he was. He had spoken to a medium a few months prior. She's coming Saturday to bless us and our home. She said she would try to see what spirits were there and try to release them. And also she told me to place black salt around our doorways and the four corners of our home. It's easily the weirdest thing we've ever experienced. Does anyone else have a doppelganger story? This happened back on the 27th of December in 2019. 
I live in the UK, but I'm primarily of Irish heritage on my father's side, and my family has been living in the locale for roughly four generations. There's a hill that I had to walk up after work to get to my home from the station. At the top, there are two Victorian lampposts. On the right, a couple of houses alongside the steep embankment, which is a dell with a tarmac understory, and to the left, woodlands, mostly oak and beech. Anyway, at the lamppost closest to me, I could see a figure struggling to climb it. At first I thought it was a rat. I'm pretty short-sighted and I wasn't wearing glasses. As I got farther and farther up the hill, it started to look more and more humanoid. I'm in shock at this point, and a bunch of correlations come into my head, and they all rest on fairy. I start laughing hysterically because of it due to the sheer absurdity, and I literally shouted something rude at the fairy because I was just in total disbelief. I guess I thought taunting it would prove it or disprove it, I don't know. But two seconds later, this clap-bang explosion goes off at the back of my head and knocks me to the ground. I just start running to get out of there. I had no bumps or injuries on the back of my head, and the sheer force of it is just unexplainable. I honestly would have shrugged off the entire experience if it hadn't been for that. Moral of the story, I suppose, is don't be mean to fairies. I'm still not entirely sure what I saw. I've lived in rural Massachusetts for 17 years of my life, and I've encountered a lot of wildlife in my time here. One day I was moving my mare up toward another pasture, which was a little ways down from my house, a good 15 minute walk. I tacked her up and we were making our way down the main road. The road is still very rural, dense forest lies on either side, and cars rarely drive on it. It's a perfect main road to horseback ride on. All of a sudden, my mare wouldn't keep going. Annoyed, I dismounted and decided to lead her on foot to the pasture. We were making our way around a corner when I noticed my mare's gaze fixated on something. Less than 15 feet away from us was a large black bear. As we made eye contact, my heart sank into my stomach. I was 16 years old at the time and barely weighed 100 pounds. Staring down something so large is unforgettable, and it was one of the scariest things I've ever experienced. Not only do I have this thing's attention, but I have a whole damn horse with me, and I'm on the ground, not even on the horse. Maybe I didn't act the way I was supposed to, but I'm alive, so I'm not complaining. I slowly started walking backwards with my mare, not wanting to risk anything. Adrenaline does weird things. After I re-rounded the corner and the bear was out of sight, I mounted my mare and made my way back to my house. I actually drove up with my car and managed to get a few blurry pictures of it, but nothing to write home about. I have had a lot of weird-ass borderline paranormal encounters in the woods, but nothing beats Mother Nature's creatures. About three years ago, I was on a family vacation to Eastern Washington, and a central aspect of our trip was visiting Lake Paragon State Park. It's an extremely rural area with a tiny Western town about a mile away, and that's about it for miles. Anyway, we had just arrived for our 10 day stay in the afternoon, and it was now around 11 PM. My mom and I left our hotel to go down to the park as she was really into photography and the moon was full. If you're not familiar, Eastern Washington as a whole is pretty desolate. So the night sky is generally incredible with very little light pollution. There were no clouds to be seen and we were a ways down a dirt back road over the park above the campground with no real roads anywhere in sight. 
we got out of the car and took some pictures, with nothing more unusual than the eerie silence. About 15 minutes into our visit, we're both facing away from the moon, looking at the rolling hills, and we noticed this odd concentration of light on one hillside, about a quarter mile away. Before either one of us could point it out to the other, the mass of light shining on this hill rolled away into nowhere. It took two seconds and was entirely gone. The whole hillside was brightly lit up, and then nothing. We freaked out and got out of there as fast as humanly possible. We both saw it. There were no other people, no moving clouds, and no roads from which headlights could shine. We still have no explanation for what we witnessed.